Okay. Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, president and owner of Emory Thompson Machine. Uh, welcome to our class today, Christy Brown, our uh, vice president of sales and marketing, and tie-dye Jeff Markow from uh, Mystic Ice Cream and uh, Ice Cream Boot Camp. So welcome. Uh, we're going to uh, make some interesting flavors today for you, and we're going to break them up into segments so that when you're watching this, you can uh, jump back and forth to whatever flavor you're looking for. You'll also find them at uh, emerythompson.com. Uh, we're hitting 549 uh, videos that we've made, and they're all uh, chronographed there that you can pick out a flavor and, and go right to it, and we give you the formula within the flavor. So we'll get started. Uh, Jeff, I think you're starting off. I changed things a little bit. Uh, I thought that since it's early in the morning, we should start with uh, coffee crunch. Well, good. I'm going to go get some coffee and watch you make the crunch. <laughs> and it's got booze. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, <laughs> yes. There you go. There are two versions of this. One is coffee crunch, and one is coffee crunch with the Lakua, the, the Lakua in it. The Kalua Lakua Honolulu. Whatever. Uh, it's early. Good girls. So uh, we'll just review the bladders once more. These are... Uh, this is what we order our, what comes when we order our ice cream mix or our ice cream blend. It's milk, skim milk, skim milk solids, a little sugar, a little vanilla, and small print, uh, which I don't like to read. Uh, they come in 10 quart bladders. There's two to a box. A box is called a case. So when you order that, you'll order a case which will be two of these. Uh, I've broken down my formulas so that this is a 24-quart machine, which is what I use at the store. Uh, and so the formula for today will be a 24-quart machine ingredient list. And that will be a full bladder, 10 quarts. You can write it. You don't want to write it down. So this is it. And as most of you know, I like to keep a bucket under here so that we don't have uh, spillage, or we have seeping upage. Uh, the bladders. Handling them is, is important, and it only requires one thing, and that's focus. As soon as you lose your focus, you lose your grip, you spill it on the floor. If this ever plops on the floor, it'll burst. And if it bursts, there's four hours to clean it up. It's, it's that bad. So just be careful. Wouldn't it be something if I drop one now? After? <laughs> so I like to grab it by the neck and only then take the top off. Obviously, if we lay it down now, is this on? I don't do mic checks. So That's we'll put mic. this in the machine. The machine has been sanitized by Christy this morning. And we'll dump the whole thing in there. And this should make us about six and a half gallons of coffee crunch, adult coffee crunch ice cream. And even though you may think it looks kind of un unwieldy to use these things, you get used to it real fast. You'll either do one of two things. You'll either drop it or Putting it in, you'll leave this open, and it'll just go on the floor. And you'll only do those things once. Okay, uh, vanilla. As you know, I like to use one ounce per quart of mix. So that would be 10 ounces of vanilla. Today, we're going to measure. Which we, we need normally to bookmark do. this as a point in history. <laughs> I'm excited. We're going to measure. Yeah. And of course, you know the secret to measuring. You can measure and then try to pour it by looking down here. Or you can simply look at where 10 ounces is, turn it around, and then it's convenient to do it. You can deposit a quarter in the box when you leave for that tip. So the vanilla.
not to sell these machines because they certainly don't need my endorsement, but the, these things are solid and big. You can throw anything in there. Okay, the next thing is the coffee in the coffee crunch. So I like to use Folgers crystals. They dissolve really easily um, and uh, they taste great. My morning coffee every day happens to be Folgers. Uh, this is eight ounces and we need seven ounces. Uh, yesterday in the class, somebody said, is that weight or volume? And I don't know. There's a difference? Which you think is more? <laughs> ah, the head didn't go up and down so fast now, did it? Uh, I don't know which, should we see? We, we can all learn from this. Seven ounces weight or seven ounces volume? I think weight would be more, right? Let's check it. Let's just all learn something today. Seven ounces, seven ounces, uh, right there. Oh, weight is definitely more. Yeah, weight is definitely more. This whole jar was, remember we used yesterday when we made this? We used weight, right? Woo, was that too strong? It was good, though. It was good. So let's do it again. Okay. So forget the lesson. We're going to use weight, all right? And this is seven ounces, so we'll pour most of it in there. Now, the machine is your best mixer ever. The blades rotate at 200 plus revolutions per minute. And right now the cream is in there, so anything we add, if we turn the machine on first, it'll start mixing right away. These crystals, uh, they're, I guess these are for instant coffee, so you would add water. Uh, nobody drinks instant coffee anymore. Isn't that something? Why do they even make this? Ooh, what a crowd, you know. <laughs> All right, we'll turn it on. We'll make ice cream. We'll go to homemade. We'll start it rolling. <laughs> and then we're going to add everything but one ounce. That's about right. Seven ounces. By weight or volume, your call. Then we're going to add... Uh, uh, the secret ingredient. The secret ingredient. I have two secret ingredients in, in a lot of recipes. And the it's, nobody's listening on at home, right? Nobody. Okay. It's just us here. It's just for us. Yeah. Okay. The secret ingredient is uh, Giardelli chocolate powder. This is the sweet ground dark chocolate powder. And they also make sweet ground white chocolate powder. We used both in the class, didn't we? All right, so we'll add this, and we're going to add about a quart. And what that does, well, you'll, you'll taste it, you'll see. And the name of the flavor that we're making is Heath Bar, uh, chocolate, uh, what is it? Coffee Crunch. Adult. So we, what? Adult coffee yes. crunch? Yes. So we need the crunch. The crunch will be good old Heath Bar pieces. Uh, these are great. I use them in a lot of ice creams. They impart flavor and texture. So we'll add uh, this much. Uh, the formula calls for a quart. Uh, but remember, this is your ice cream. You'll make the determination. Maybe you want half a quart, maybe you want a quart and a half. Uh, same thing with the coffee. Maybe you want a little stronger. That's what's going to separate your store from your store. Just don't forget that the end all is not us. It's the customer. A famous story. I, well, let's get going, right? Too many stories. So we'll add the Heath Bar Crunch. One, one cheap plug on my machines, don't try this with any other machine because it won't work. 
They all have an opening that's only about that wide, so you can pour extracts in. Uh, our machines, it's that wide, so nuts, cookies, candies, Anything. You can put bananas, gravel in there. everything go right in the machine, which means for every particle of dairy, there's going to be a particle of flavor right next to it. It's going to be a much more intense flavor than just adding things as it comes out. And we'll add a smidge of Kahlua uh, or coffee liqueur. Just a smidge. This is a, a 750, so we'll add a smidge. And don't try that on any other machine. You have to because it won't freeze. We have so much freezing power that you can put the alcohol right in the machine. Otherwise, you'd have to stir it in as it's coming out because it would keep the uh, product from freezing. Because we're mixing the liquor with the uh, large amount of cream, uh, you don't really have to buy the name brand, which is, in this, the name brand is $33. Uh, this was nine. And I've used this a lot of times, Komori. It's very good. Uh, so that takes care of that. Little coffee left. Now, what's left to do? Turn on the refrigeration. Before we do, what do I always do? Uh, bless the machine. I always taste it. Thanks, Christy. Just in case, look at the mess here. Just in case I feel it needs more or less of something. We can always do less of something. Uh, you know how to do that? <laughs> Think about it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, nice color. Ah, now we'll turn it on. This is the refrigeration. When I turn it on, out of habit, two things are going to happen, and I like to watch and look for them. One is the compressor will go on. You'll hear that now. That's the compressor. In your machine, that's what will happen. When that happens, something else happens concurrently. A water-cooled machine, so the water is being fed into it, and conversely, it'll come out of it. So, uh, mine is in the sink also in the store, and there it is, there's your water coming out. And it's warm water, it's just like the system in your car, in your radiator. You put the water in your radiator, when you start the car, it cycles through the whole engine, cooling it down. Uh, in the car's case, it is a continuous cycle. Here, it's expelled. So that's the recipe. We have 10 quarts of mix, 10 ounces vanilla, 7 ounces of Folgers, 1 quart of chocolate powder, 1 quart of Heath Bar, and a bottle of 750 of Kahlua. And uh, it's going to be really good. So any questions so far? I said, any questions so far? Yes, sir. The heat bar, the pieces that you put in, will they be the same size or do the blades? Great question. Get repeat, asked, get I'm going to do that. I know how the system works. <coughs> he asked, the question was, will the heat bar maintain the integrity of the pieces throughout the process? And that's a great question. You're going to get two results by using the heat bar crunch like this. One is you'll get the flavor, which is a toffee-type flavor. You'll get that flavor because some of them will dissolve. But you'll also maintain the crunch. Heath Bar is a crazy thing. If you did this with Oreos, they're just gone. You'll get the flavor, but you won't get the crunch. Uh, you can do it with M&Ms. You can do it with frozen Snickers. Uh, you can do it with a lot of things. Surprisingly, I've used Kit Kat. And Kit Kat pretty much dissolves. So Heath Bar is a great thing. And the bag that I, I use, this is how it's universally sold in these bags. These are eight pounds, I think. And this is uh, what, what you can buy. Uh, and they're already chopped up perfectly. And this is Restaurant Depot or uh, I think just Restaurant Depot, unless you go online and get it. I don't think Sam's Club sells these. Uh, but this is great, and you'll use them in a lot of stuff. Now, your missus had a question. So, I 
watched a lot of your videos, and I know that you guys use the bladder bag mix already. Do you have a recipe or a ratio if you wanted to make your own mix? I do. Uh, make, let me, can I give my opinion first? Yeah, yeah. Making your own mix is a waste of time uh, because of probably one main thing, and that's pasteurization. Uh, you need a pasteurizer if you're going to make your own mix. Pasteurizer is, you know, my goal, I want to get you in business. I want to get you in business within 30 days or 45 or 60 days, and I want to get you in business least expensively. A pasteurizer isn't on my list. And these are so easy. Where do you live? Florida. Well, there's two great places in Florida to get the mix, and they deliver, and it's perfect. Uh, one is in Boynton Beach. It's called Ice Cream Club. And one is in Sarasota called Dairy Mix. The Sarasota one now delivers further up the coast. I think they're into the Carolinas now. Uh, but every state, if you want to find out where to get it, just go on Google and put ice cream mix comma and your zip code and you'll come up with a list of dairies uh, Steve actually has a list uh, a paper printed. yeah you can email me Steve at emerythompson.com or Christy at emerythompson.com and we have a list of uh, dairies it's not every dairy in the country but we can send that out to you there's Steve. probably going to be one in strong. your city it's in their packet it's in their packet. Oh, it's okay. in their packet. But also, those of you watching this video, you can uh, email us uh, for that information. Um, Jeff's right about you need a pasteurizer. The uh, federal law is, is really weird, and we're stuck with it. You're buying Ooh. pasteurized milk at the supermarket. You're buying pasteurized cream at the supermarket. You're adding sugar. The federal government says you take all these pasteurized products and blend it in a bucket and pour it in the machine. We want it repasteurized before you do it. Um, the other thing is that people overlook is before you buy a pasteurizer, make sure you can find a source for 50 gallons of heavy cream. Heavy cream is sold in half pint containers at a very high price because that's the most profitable way for the dairy to sell a valuable and limited quantity. When you need 50 gallons to make a full day's worth of ice cream, that's going to be very hard to come by, and it's going to be very pricey. Uh, the dairies are experts. They have scientists on board who do nothing more than uh, every day test the milk coming in from the cows, see that it's blended properly so that we have the key to any business, which is consistency. We need the same ice cream. Jeff just tested the product, uh, uh, but actually, in actuality, he's got a formula and he knows exactly what's going in there because he wants the ice cream he made uh, last March to be exactly as it is today. Tell your story about the Burger King, or the, the McDonald's burger, that's a good one. Well, McDonald's, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but I think it's a lousy hamburger. Uh, but it's the same lousy hamburger in Moscow as it is in, uh, you know, Turkey, as, as it is in New Orleans. Uh, when you go through the, the Golden Arches, you know you're going to get a lousy burger, but it's going to be consistency. So that's what business runs on is consistency. When you have, uh, Jeff has a uh, course, that, a correspondence course, and it's got three by five file cards. And if you're hiring someone else how to make ice cream, you tell them, you follow this recipe exactly. Uh, if, if you decide, oh, the boss is a jerk and I'm going to put in another ounce of vanilla, we're going to break your kneecaps, drag you out into the street, and shoot you because we can't afford to have inconsistency in the product. So it's, it's very important that once you decide on your formula, you stick to it and you don't change it until you decide it needs to be changed. Trivia question. I run trivia at the store once a week. What city has the most McDonald's wow. in the world? What city in the world has the most McDonald's? I'm going to guess Moscow. Orlando. Oh, uh, of course. Orlando, of course because of the Disney parks. Mm -hmm. I was going okay. to say Houston. Uh, that's another quarter in the bucket when you eat it. It's 50 <laughs> cents. How do you know when the ice cream is ready? We're waiting here for the ice cream to be ready. Ready is subjective, isn't it? Uh, his ready is different than my ready is different than Christie's ready. Uh, and your ready will be different than 
all the other readies. That's why there's no timer on the machine for the entire process. Uh, there is a timer on here for the uh, uh, compressor, uh, the freezing process. Uh, but in my opinion, don't even look at it. It's irrelevant, mm -hmm. uh, just my opinion. Because yesterday we made, uh, Monday we made a variegate, uh, which is the swirls in the ice cream. When you do that, the ice cream has to be in there longer because you need it firmer so that when you mix the, we made peanut butter and jelly ice cream, when you mix the jelly in, it doesn't seep into the population of the other part of the ice cream. But normally, I pull it sooner than Steve does. I don't know why. Nothing uh, wrong with either one. No, and, and she, well, she pulls it different. Hey, let's not go there. So it's almost ready. I'll, this is what it looks like when it's almost ready. Can you all see this? See that? Now, as a rule of thumb, you can know when it's ready when you do that and it holds a peak in the bottom. When it holds a peak, you're, you're there or real close. When it, you still have some time. This has been going for nine hours and twenty, nine and a half hours nine hours that's some ice cream this has been going for nine and a half minutes and that's pretty much in the ballpark now why will this take a little longer than other ice creams alcohol, alcohol. and what's in the alcohol that'll cause that sugar of course and that's your rule of thumb anything the more sugar you have in your formula the longer it's going to take because sugar freezes uh, he'll tell you all that well, and also it's his first batch too. So your very first batch of the day, starting up any machine, whatever model you do have, it's going to take a, a little bit longer than the rest of your batches. So if he was going to turn around and make another batch right after this of the same thing, two, three more batches, he's gonna shave off maybe a minute, minute and a half of the next batches after that because the cylinder's already super cold. Sorry. Yes, sir. Air cooled or water cooled, but the same amount of time. Yeah, same thing. Yes, the uh, air cooled compressor is also made by Copeland, the world's largest manufacturer here in Ohio. In Ohio, and um, it's they're the best compressors we can buy. They're rotary engine instead of a piston going like this. It's spinning around like that, and the efficiency and our and, and uh, BTU output on the water cooled versus the air cooled is exactly the same. Uh, but that sugar. Is, is really the differential. Uh, basically, vanilla is going to take you eight minutes. Everything else is going to be a little bit longer because you're putting sugar in. We uh, put sugar in with the cocoa powder. Uh, we put sugar in with the heat candy bars. So that's going to up the, uh, some of that. The, some of the flavors, like rum raisin, where you're using real, you know, 150 proof rum or whatever, that'll take 22 minutes, 23 minutes. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> you got to try it? I already did. It's really good. <laughs> Alcohol doesn't freeze. I think it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I believe it's around two, minus 234 that alcohol freezes Fahrenheit. Um, but it will stay in suspension in the ice cream. So you are going to have a softer looking ice cream and a longer freeze time with anything that you put alcohol in. Uh, Christy and I found out the hard way by putting too much alcohol in the ice cream you end up with a product that you don't even taste what it is. You just take a bite and you go like that because we overdid it with the alcohol. Uh, so alcohol is a flavor. It's not a mixed drink. So keep that in mind uh, when you're working with it that you can go overboard. We also made that same reaction to his mint Italian ice. <laughs> well, exactly what Christian did. See, they, they always had to bring up my failures. I, I made a- There's uh, so, so many of them. <laughs> I, I, I made a mint Italian ice, and Christy tasted it like she just did, and she goes, well, I guess we won't, won't need mouthwash for the next two months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to pull it, so I do the same thing in reverse. When I shut it, I want to hear the compressor shut off. The water will stop in the sink. Tuesday, Thursday. There we go. Okay? Now I feel comfortable doing it. 
when you pull it, um, when you extract it now, the cylinder where the ice cream is made is canted five degrees. So this thing will shoot out of there, um, filling your buckets like that. Uh, I'm going to do it a little slower so you can watch what happens. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Now you get to eat all this, and by the end of the day, when we say, hey, do you want to make one more flavor? It's going to be, no, no, no more, please, can't take any more. That's a good looking product there. Yeah, the ice cream too. <laughs> Help. Here. Where's my baseball bat? <laughs> you open the window, I let the air in. Boy, I hope your staff likes this. There's going to be enough of it. I'm already going to take some home. These guys are rookies. They're talking about taking home ice cream. What you do with something like this is you put it up into containers, you freeze it, and then when you got to go see a specialist, you bring ice cream. You know, I had an eye specialist in New York. They told me, bring war and peace. You're going to be here three and a half hours. Not me. I walked in with my ice cream and some spoons, and I said, this is for the doctor. And they said, great, I will take it. Uh, no, that's OK. I'm going to hold on to it. Oh, and look, it's melting. Yeah, I got right in. He was a nice guy, but uh, the third time I brought ice cream, I waited for two and a half hours. And I said, uh, we were on a first name basis by then. I said, Jeff, what's up? And uh, he says, oh, the lady before you brought brownies, so I wasn't hungry. But to keep it in mind, it's a great bribe. Politicians, uh, anybody you need to bribe, uh, ice cream works well. Yeah, you know, my neighbors just learned what I do and that I have one in my kitchen. So <laughs> let's just say I've already I'll show made you two a great way ones. to save some more money. Uh, when you do this in your store, these are going to go in the freezer and you have to label them so you know what's in there. Uh, the, the government requires that you put the date on the label. So uh, initially, some people who come to the class uh, start looking up label makers and, and those tags and everything, when in fact, all you need is masking. masking tape and a marker. And just put it on here, write it down, put it in the freezer. That's all. Uh, that'll save some money. Yeah, you don't have to go out and get freezer safe ta uh, tape because it's going to stick nicely. I'm going to start putting these in the freezer. Okay, you're going to try putting them in the freezer? You have to take two. Two? There's oh, Michaela. Right. In. These spoons are from Frozen Dessert Please Supplies. They supplied us with the spoons for all of your flavors for the seminars. Their information is also in your Emory Thompson packet. They should have a flyer in there. They're a great company. They have just about everything you can think of that you do need in the industry. I think it turned out well. change in this formula? I'd make more. <laughs> your prejudice, it's yours. Anybody? Any uh, differences? Any changes? So he throw some heat bar on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good idea. It would also look nice in the serving cabinet if you're using a visual case. Otherwise, they won't see it. But uh, not a bad idea. Well, maybe instead of on top, like as it's extruding out, so it's all in it, so you have a few more of those crunchy 
thicker, crunchy bits. Yeah, you can do that. You can uh, do it. You can add ingredients two ways. You can either open the gate halfway and let it come out a little slower, or you can tap the infant over uncontrolled down, and uh, so that it slows down when it's coming out. So you can actually fill uh, pint containers right here and on the other machines. Um, let me just show you how simple that would be. I go to make ice cream. Uh, we're running super premium. I'm sure, that's close. So here I am at uh, my super premium speed, 165, and I want to fill pints. So I'm just going to tap it down to 130. Now it's spinning slower, and it'll come out a little easier. You still have to be fast. You want to open it, close it, put it up here. Open it, close it, put it up here. And then when you're finished, uh, then come back to it and, and put the caps on them. And um, one little old-timers trick is I don't have a pint container here, but oh, here we go. Let's, we'll use this. Once you fill this container, you know how when you go to the grocery store, it's always perfectly filled. Well, it's done by machine. Uh, before there were machines, what we did is we took those pints with the lid on it and turned it upside down. Now the ice cream is falling to the bottom, and, uh, or it's falling to the top, so that when, and we freeze it like that, so that when they open the container, it's perfectly filled up top with no air gaps. Just that simple, turn it upside down. Okay. What's today's date? Yes. Yeah. Oh, today's February 8th, um, but I did have a question. October 8th already? February 8th. Oh, February 8th. Okay. yes. So I know you made that with a, a dairy mix. Um, are you able to make ice cream with a plant-based mix? And then how long does that stay fresh in those containers? Um, the cold, first off, the second question was how long will it stay fresh in these containers? Uh, if you do it did at the right any? temperature, it oh. could be six months. Uh, however, my old adage, which you'll hear over and over again in my videos, is if you've got ice cream sitting in your freezer for six months, get rid of it. It's a lousy flavor. Nobody likes bubblegum licorice ice cream. And if you're calling up and saying, my ice cream is, my bubblegum licorice is five months old, is it any good? The answer is yes, ma'am, it's got another month to go. But if it's been sitting in that hardening cabinet for five months, you're not turning over your inventory. It's a lousy product. Get rid of it. I personally make um, coffee banana ice cream. I mean, what a disgusting combination. But I make it purposely because no one here at the factory will steal my ice cream. And so I survive the bananas. I know it's good for potassium. And uh, I get all the ice cream I want without anyone stealing it. So that, that would be the only other reason to do that. Uh, the other part of your question, I started four years ago uh, working with Dairy Free uh, when nobody else had even heard of it. And I've been promoting it ever since because I firmly believe that it's always going to be a complement to dairy ice cream. It's not going to overtake it like some people would like you to believe, but it's not a fad either. It's going to be around forever. I use two different methods. I mean, there's soy, which, eh, it's okay. Uh, and, and there's other products that you can use, but the two best are either a coconut base or an oat base. Uh, the coconut base you can use uh, with uh, coconut milk, uh, cane sugar, and a couple of cans of uh, cream of coconut. And then you add your flavor. The problem there is you can only, you can make any flavor in the world you want of ice cream in dairy free. And, and by the way, uh, Oreo cookies are vegan, so that fits in. Uh, the only problem is vanilla. Uh, the, the vanilla and the coconut are fighting for world dominance and so it really confuses the flavor. Um, there is another pr way to do it, and that's with oak, oat, O-A-T, milk. Uh, if you do oat, uh, it's smoother, it's creamier, uh, it uh, doesn't uh, partake any taste whatsoever. So since it doesn't add any taste, you have to add more flavor, you know, more coffee to make up for the lack of uh, flavor that you're getting from the dairy. Uh, you can do it from scratch. Um, I personally buy a product that's spelled M-A-M-I-S, M-A-M-I-S gelato.com. Uh, it looks like it's pronounced mammy's gelato.com. Uh, she pronounces it mommy's. Uh, Italian, it would be mommy's or mother. Uh, either way, M-A-M-I-S gelato.com uh, has got coconut and oat. They're both excellent. 
easy to use. It's in a powdered form. Um, I just use a little more of the powder than uh, they do in their recipes. But it's great. Uh, uh, Jeff and all of us have cut down from 32 flavors down to 12 flavors, and or there take give or take. And I would have two of them be dairy free. And if the market increases, make four of them dairy free. If it goes beyond that, buy a second freezer case. So great product, and and you got to have it. I mean, the the age group buying it is 49 down to, you know, babies. And there's also, one last thing, there's also no reason why it shouldn't hit uh, uh, the age group of Jeff, you know, the real old geezers, um, because uh, they find out, I found this out from my much older sister, that as you get older, it's harder to digest animal fat. And it's just tough on the gut. Well, this product is just easy on your uh, digestive system. So it's absolutely perfect. So. Once you get us past uh, my age group, you, and Jeff, you get us past our affinity towards high fat and a lot of sugar, and let us try a, a dairy-free product, we're going to say, hey, this is great, and it doesn't upset my stomach two days later. So I think the market for dairy-free is really unlimited. It, it's wonderful. I think next class we'll maybe try to get a dairy-free in. Yeah, definitely. Because we can take any flavor we're making today and make it dairy-free. So You're up. Well, we are up. We're up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, turtle ice cream is the next. Here's the formula. So if you can just pass one down and then um, don't forget about them over there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. What happened to the whisk? Oh, I was using it. It's down here. Is are we using the CB350? That's not the, that's a masher. That's a masher. I don't know where the whisk went. Okay. Well, we'll pull a Jeff. The whisk disappeared. Yeah. Maybe it was in Jeff's last ice cream. No. <laughs> okay. No whisk in there? No. It's all right. I'll just use a spatula. It'll be okay. So everybody knows we thought we would do a turtle ice cream and due to Valentine's Day. Everybody knows the turtle candy, right? Obviously, these are way too expensive to just buy a whole mess of these, put them in the grinder, and put it in your ice cream. So we're going to take all the ingredients that it takes to make a turtle and turn it into ice cream. So you can call it turtle ice cream. People might look at it weird, maybe just change the name a little bit. But either way, it's a great flavor. You can keep it year-round and just change the name. I know a lot of... <laughs> okay. That's a little small. <laughs> I'll Thanks, find Jeff. it later. Okay, so we need six ounces of chocolate. Hmm? Someone, oh, have a question? No? I don't think that's going to work very well. You don't have to mix it completely all the way, just enough to get it saturated, because the machine will do the rest. Do you want to try that, Christy? No, I'm good. I'm going to use it for the cake, then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then what else do we need to add to the machine? You guys have the formula. We got to grind those up. Tell us what's in the formula. Anybody? Caramel? So let's get this going. Now, Does anybody have a, a nut allergy? Okay. You froze those first, right? No, not the, candid, not the candied pecans because they're, they've got enough sugar and they're going to keep their, their texture and their shape pretty well. So I like to grind them up first. These Ninja blenders are about $99 and they're absolutely incredible. They'll, they'll grind up anything. On sale this week at Walmart for 60 Really? Wow. Buy two. Buy five. <laughs> Imagine that they can sell a blender for $60. What must they be making it for? Yeah, at the most. Yeah, at the most. <coughs> yeah that's true, too. <laughs> okay, so we have our three and a half quarts of mix, our six ounces of 
chocolate powder. Now let's add our caramel. Two jars, right? Look at that. I know you can buy these in this way, or you can buy the economy size. They come in a really big um, you know, jar or a can, almost like the pineapple juice can over there. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. But we just go to the store here and just buy what we need to buy. And then I think the last thing is chocolate chips, right? Just gonna say I can't open it. Nice. No, I got it. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Do you do anything anymore? Go away. <laughs> and the pecans. Do what? <laughs> it, it's Jeff, Jeff being Jeff. <laughs> it's self explanatory. Yes, my new role model job is the 1950s refrigerator. I'm like this. Vanna White. I think that looks good. So that just goes to show that you can take, you know, any candy and as we talked about, it doesn't have to be the actual candy itself. You know, just like I think Jeff is going to do a cake. Um, you want to do a Irish cream cake ice cream. You don't have to actually make the cake to put it into the machine, but you just buy the ingredients that consists of it to make it into an ice cream. Possibilities are endless. Um, you know, as uh, Jeff's famous words are, go supermarketing. I really like that terminology. You go to the store, you just pick up anything that you need. Um, if you're having supply issues, that's the best part of having an Emory Thompson is you can go to the store and just buy whatever you need to put right into the machine. Anybody have any questions? Uh, what's the benefit of the cool, the water versus the, what was the other option? Air, Air cooled for the larger machines? So the, the question she asks is, what is the, what's the benefit of having a water versus the air? As far as functionality, there's not. Both machines run and function the same. Typically, all of our sales are water-cooled for the floor models. Uh, the reason is it's, you know, water comes in to keep it cool, water comes right back out, and it doesn't produce any heat. It's not going to make your building hot or stuffy. And air-cooled does that. Typically, people go with an air-cooled because they have really strict water restrictions where they're at in their city. Uh, you know, they're remote islands, they're way up a mountain where water is very scarce to get to. Um, places like Alaska, you know, water-cooled machines can probably freeze over pretty quickly, you know, with their kind of sub-zero temperatures that they do have. So, preferably, you know, water-cooled is always best. And then also, if you are wanting to conserve your water, our machines also work very well on a glycol chiller. So it can recycle the water and then come right back to the machine. Yes. Little trivia, the uh, air-cooled machines are built by Christie's husband, Mickey. Uh, he's our second engineer, and uh, he is specialized in the air-cooled units. And because of that, uh, they now run, at, as we, I mentioned before, the same efficiency as the water-cooled. Mm -hmm. uh, they're ter terrific if you need it. If you're in Saudi Arabia, uh, if you're on a septic tank and yep. you can't fill it up, uh, the rare occasion like San Diego where they do not allow water cool anything, they would prefer that the citizens not drink water, um, then you would go with an air-cooled unit. But otherwise, 90, as Christy said, 90% of the machines leaving here of the larger models are water-cooled. Um, it sounds inefficient to throw water away, but it isn't because water ne never disappears. It goes into the ground, it evaporates. It may not rain, rain over your town, but it's going to rain over somebody's town. But electricity is, once used, is gone forever. And we know, all know how electricity costs are going up four times a year uh, because it's fossil fuel. And so your electric bill gets very expensive running air-cooled as opposed to water. <laughs> so water really is the more efficient, uh, simple way to go. Fewer moving parts, less cost to buy the machine. We pass along the savings to you because it doesn't have fan motors or a radiator. I, f 
got the yeah. vanilla. Oops. <laughs> this is um, Lockhead Vanilla. They actually call it Steve's Blend, uh, Steve's Special Blend, because uh, uh, we use so much of it and we promote it so much. Uh, regular store vanilla is not going to cut it in an ice cream parlor. You need a high quality vanilla. Anybody who's in the ice cream business uh, or ultimately will get to the point where if they walk into your store, they're not going to buy uh, the salted caramel or the moose tracks. They're going to buy your vanilla because as Tom Carvel once said to me, if they're cheating on the vanilla, you can be damn sure they're cheating on the more expensive flavors. And it really does come down to that, is you can judge a store's quality by their vanilla. I always go into a store and, and, and buy their vanilla, and it tells me everything I need to know about their store. Uh, but, so this company is called Lockhead, L-O-C-H-H-E-A-D. It's an American company, it's a family business, great people, we can give you their information. Uh, otherwise, you just call up Lockhead and say, uh, you want Steve's special blend. Uh, it, it does make a difference whose vanilla you use. Yeah, the, their information is also in your, your packet too as well. Yes. So, I have a water pool unit and I close in the winter. Do I need to winterize the pool system like the would not be? I believe you just need to get the water out of the, you need to blow the water out of the actual machine. Like you said you had a water cooled, yes? Yeah, yeah just get so, the water out. That's a. The question was, uh, do you have to winterize a water cooled machine if you shut down for the winter and there's no heat in your building? Absolutely. Whether it's a soft ice cream machine or a batch freezer or a milkshake machine, they all have to be winterized. The water uh, circulates around through the uh, system uh, with a Freon gas tube inside it. And if that water freezes that's left in the machine, it'll break the Freon tube and now your machine's ruined. You call in your refrigeration man or someone handy with a tank of compressed air and you blow it through uh, the system so that there's no water in there and you're good for the whole winter. Yes, Jeff? If the machine is left in a controlled environment temperature-wise, do you still have to do that? Jeff's question was if your machine is left in the winter in a cold climate, in a controlled environment, you have to do that. Uh, the simple answer is we had a snowstorm in Brooklyn one year that lasted five days. Five sec uh, certain sections of Brooklyn were completely without power. Those were controlled environments. There were pastry shops. They were open year round. No power for five days. All those machines were ruined. They all ended up being sold in the Virgin Islands in Mexico, which then they found out were useless. So the answer is if there's any risk, that the power will go out, absolutely. And the chance of power going out nowadays uh, because of bad weather is so high that, yeah, I would blow them out. Speaking of power, it's also good to have a shutoff box like that for your machinery instead of just, especially the CB200, you know, it comes with the plug and you can plug it into a wall. It comes with the receptacle as well. Um, that's always the safest method because at the end of the night, you can just turn it off and you're done. Uh, Steve always preaches your ice cream makers, whether they're 16, 17, 18, 22, uh, they're going to have wet hands from working with the machine, cleaning it, rinsing it. They go to unplug something, you never know, so it's always safe to have that. Um, plus, you know, living in Florida, we have thunderstorms all the time. You never know, it could be a thunderstorm coming through, could be a famous squirrel chewing on a line outside, uh, you could have a brownout, a blackout, so at the end of the day, it's always good to just shut it off. Yes. Uh, also, if you want to save a little money and not put the wall mount, before you leave at night, just go to your breaker box, hit the breaker. That works as well, too. <laughs> if there's no power to the machine, then nothing can happen to the machine. It's, it's that simple. Yes, correct. That one, the CB350, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The CB350 is a 20 amp breaker. It's only going to pull. Uh, at its peak, probably about 16 amps. So it's, it's extremely efficient. It's 220 single phase, meaning that you can technically run this in your bedroom, in your home, uh, because the power coming into your house is 220 and then broken down into plug-in outlets. But if you have an electric clothes dryer in your home, there's a 220 outlet. If you've got an electric oven, it's 220. Uh, 220 is available in every building in North America. So you can literally take that machine anywhere. The other machines on the market are basically uh, Italian made with Chinese parts. 
and uh, they are made for the European market, which is a different type of power than we have here. Uh, so you usually have to uh, uh, buy a transformer for about three grand just to run their machine. Ours are made in the USA, ready to uh, hook up and go to work. Yes, Jeff? How many amps is the 24 quart? The 24 quart is 40 amps. It's double of this one, and it's going to draw about 32. Yes, sir? Do you need a surge protector on them? Um, no. If you're in Tampa, Florida, sure. Because uh, the question was, do you need a surge protector? Uh, we have so much. We're the lightning capital of the United States. We have so much pop-up lightning storms that you can never go wrong with a surge protector. I'd rather have it on the whole building, though, uh, not just one machine. If you pull that handle down, you have no problems. No, uh, there is protection on the, uh, is there a surge protector on the compressor? No, because it would have to be a really big one. These little ones that we have in our bathrooms uh, are not designed for heavy machinery. So, uh, no, it's not in there. But you walk away from the machine uh, and freeze it up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow down and it's going to shut itself off to protect itself. And it's not going to let you start it up until it either completely melts down or you take it out and start over. But the real answer is, sorry, shame on you. You were supposed to be in here making ice cream uh, and, and not talking on the phone or working with customers. You say to your customers, uh, I'm making ice cream for the next two hours. Uh, you know, don't bother me. You know, I'm in, I'm in my ice cream room playing. So there is a thermostatic reset where if it starts to go too much, it shuts it down for 10 minutes. It will, it will come back on, but we want you to open the door and take everything out because otherwise you're starting up against a massive load, and that's not good for anything. Ice cream, Italian ices, sorbets are really, really heavy. So uh, if you make the mistake of freezing it up, open the door, take it out, start over. A little more. Uh, that, that's simple. So if it shuts down over, what the hell shut down? The machine will clean it out. The machine shut down because you let it go too long. It's that simple. It will, it's, it's reading the torque, and it's going to read it to the point where it just says, that's it, we're cutting off. The amperage is too much. It'll, it'll, dis it'll display a code, and, um, and it says reset, and then ready. Yeah, it's, it's a common question, and I get it all the time, usually at 9 o'clock at night on Sunday. Okay, good. <laughs> and that, so, uh, by, go ahead. We'll, I, we'll want to answer that later. Uh, let's go back to talk about sugar content. So, you know how Jeff said the more sugar you add, the longer it's going to take to freeze, right? So, on your formula, how, what's the approximate minutes that I say that it was going to take? Okay, remember, one, it's the first batch, so the machine was very warm. Two, we added chocolate powder, which is sugar. We added caramel, which is we added chocolate chips, which is, okay, so we're probably going to push about 15 minutes when it goes to freeze. We're at 13 and a half minutes now, and it's pretty thick, you know, but it's going to take a little bit longer. And as Jeff said, we call it a cutoff check. So if you open and close your gate, and it cuts that ice cream off, and it kind of plops down, that's a good sign that it's done. Uh, same thing, the puddling versus the peaking. So if it's peaking after it comes into the pan, you know it's or your container you know it's ready to go if it starts to puddle it's it could probably use a go a little bit longer now to go over what jeff was saying about why some people pull it thinner and thicker and versify there's no right or wrong way it's your preference on how you want to pull your product um, if you're going to do fold-ins the thinner that you pull it it's going to be easier to fold in whatever you're trying to fold like a variegate or some more inclusions that you want to add the thicker you pull it you're going to have to kind of knock your tub down because you're going to want your ice cream to stay nice and layered so you don't have air pockets um, you know my other colleague mike he likes to pull his very 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 thick so does uh slade but they're into the business to eat it right now because that's what they want i want to eat it now they don't want to worry about putting it in for storage. Um, I kind of pull mine in the middle. I know Jeff pulls his a little bit thinner. So let's give it a check. We're at 14 and a half. 
looks pretty good. I think it could do maybe another half a minute, minute. Now here's another secret too. Once you turn off this compressor, if you think it needs another 30 seconds or so, it's still going to be freezing for another 30 seconds after you shut it off. So if you extract that or turn this off and you wait a little bit, it's still so cold, it's going to be freezing it a little bit more. Kind of like um, why they invented cooling racks for baking. You know, when you pull your muffins out, they're still going to bake because your oven or your, your muffin tin is still very, very, very hot. So we're going to turn that off. And I'm going to say we're going to pull it and get another tub. What consistency you pull it at does not change the crystalline structure of the ice cream. Just the uh, crystalline structure of the ice cream is going to be the exact same as Christie's or mine. It, it's just a matter of convenience. We want to get it out of the machine quickly. Other machines you'll see they have very unimaginative guards that block it and they tell you, oh, isn't that wonderful? It, it just looks so pretty coming out. It's taking longer and now you're changing the consistency because your first product came out, you know, like baking. So, so. Excuse me. <laughs> and then on the vanilla, you saw I forgot it. Is it gonna make a difference to this? No. Um, did I add it just because I could? Yeah. Now, if I was making vanilla ice cream, nah, obviously that would have been a big no-no. So we're going to stop that and we're just going to let that go. And it's time to scoop time. Jeff, you, you can chit-chat if you like. <laughs> what? I so said you can chit-chat if you like. I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> yes, sir. Can you talk about the hardening cabinet and the importance of it? Or the I won't, of? no. <laughs> uh, so a hardening cabinet it's not necessary it is recommended however there is a difference um, you know Jeff is against them Steve is for them and I'm partial I say if you can't afford it a chest freezer is going to be just fine if you have the means to do so absolutely uh, reason is, is a chest freezer is designed to keep things frozen that's already frozen coming home from the grocery store. Your peas, your pizzas, your pizza pockets, they aren't designed to bring ice cream down super fast, super quick and hold it there for a very long time and you can't overload it. You can't pack an entire chest freezer like that to the top of freshly made ice cream because it won't freeze it fast enough. A hardening cabinet is designed to do that. That call was my doctor. He said, I'm out of ice cream. You need a physical. <laughs> uh, the hardening cabinet, as Christy was telling you, um, not only does it go to 25 below, and it's two separate compartments, two separate compressors, but if you were to use, it's, it's easier to visualize. If you had a, a big bucket like this of hot soup that you just finished cooking, and you put that into a normal freezer, that Jeff. freezer is going to warm up very quickly because of Jeff. all the heat coming off of this. The uh, hardening cabinet, specifically designed to harden ice cream, uh, is going to take that hot soup, chill it down, freeze it, and it'll be solid as a block in about six to eight hours. And then that becomes your inventory. That's where you keep your product. So people buy the CB350. Uh, it gets them into business. It's the largest selling machine in the world. And then they start off with one or two of the $900 Home Depot chest freezers, which is great. And then they call up a year or two later and they say, I need a 24 quart. And they explain their, their situation to me and I say, well, unfortunately for me, you don't need a, hard, a 24 quart. You need more freezer space. Your ultimate goal is I need more inventory. If you buy a hardening cabinet then, you don't have to buy it today, but if you buy it then, now you can fill that all up and eight hours later you can dump it all frozen rock solid into your chest freezers. Now you have four times as much inventory as you did with just the two chest freezers. So it's, it's the way I put people into business, and Jeff does too. The progression is you start off spending very, as little money as possible. Let the business make money. Don't go out and buy a BMW. Don't go lease a BMW your first year of business. Plow it back into the business. You'll, you'll, you'll make your money back many times over later on. But you plow it back into the business, and you buy equipment as you need it. Other people are going to tell you, oh, you need this today, this and this and this, and they're going to run up $100,000 and you're broke and they're, doing, and they're buying a BMW. 
So uh, we're going to always treat you and your money with great respect and spend it only when it's absolutely necessary. So Christy's going to pass this out for you to try. I can't wait to try it. I'm going to try it. Corners. You, had to, you had to repeat the question. Uh, oh, the good. young lady asked how to load your chest freezers, presuming you're not going to use a hardening cabinet. And yeah, there are colder spots in these all the chest freezers, and the colder spots are obviously on the bottom and in the corners. So if I have, when I make a batch of ice cream, six gallons. I won't just stack three and three in the freezer. I'll try to go for the corners. I'll separate them because those six gallons aren't frozen. So you want them next to stuff that is frozen. Make sense? I paid you to ask that. Yes, yes sir. sir. So you're getting the ice cream obviously colder faster and harder than you can. What's the, are you risking like, um, Ice, per, ice forming if you don't do it fast enough. What is the advantage, I guess, of the hardening cabinet? The product in the, if you overload the um, uh, chest freezer, which you can only do the bottom level today, and then now that's all blocks of, call it ice if you want, it's ice cream. Uh, then tomorrow you can do another level, and then the next day you can do another level. So you're very limited on how much you can make, which when you're first starting out is fine. If you start a second level in that hardening in that chest freezer all the temperature is going to warm up to above uh, the freezing point of ice cream which we never want to go above six uh, but it's all going to warm up and then it's going to freeze and yes it's going to be a big mass of ice crystals uh, so the chest freezers are extremely limited it's the way you're going to most likely start your business but uh, always when i talk to you on the phone or christy talks to you we're going to be planning your store. You're planning for uh, uh, April opening. We're planning for the next five years uh, because we know what you're going to need. So I'll give you an example. This, uh, we were talking to the electrician, and this is a 20-amp breaker. This is a 40-amp breaker. So when you are doing a new store, I'm going to talk to your electrician. We're going to get his name and talk to him on the phone, and we're going to say, I know you don't see my rationale yet, but when you're instead of running this, wire uh, as a certain thickness. We want you to run uh, a heavier wire to run this machine. Uh, the numbers are actually, this is a 12 wire and we're actually going to go down to an 8 with this. The reason is we know someday you're going to buy this. So instead of closing down your store for a week, tearing up the walls again, running the line, and then repatching it back up so you can put this machine in, the wire that's feeding this is more than ample, so all the electrician has to do is come in is disconnect this, connect it to this with the kill switch in the back, and you're good to go. So maybe it costs you $80, $100 more in wire size uh, to be ready for the future. Well, it's such a simple thing, and we just saved you several thousand dollars of you know, sheetrock people and painting and, and closing the store, the whole works. Uh, so. If you know you're going to need this thing and you're doing a, a fresh start, run the electric lines for this and then don't use them. Just have them there. It's nothing more than two 115-volt uh, uh, you know, plug-in, plug-in, plug-in play. Just two 115-volt plug-ins. You don't have to buy it today. You may not buy it for a year. Or uh, what's happening, and you're all going to be you know, incredibly surprised. Every single person in this room is going to just be amazed how fast their business is going to grow and expand. Uh, people love American ice cream. Uh, gelato is, of course, very popular in Europe, but it was a fad in the United States. It's all but gone. Countries that were gelato, like uh, the, uh, the uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Dubai, uh, that area was gelato. Now it's hard ice cream. Um, New Zealand, Australia are hard ice cream. South America is hard ice cream. Uh, no, excuse me, South America uh, remains gelato. A lot of people from Germany move there. Africa is, is hard ice cream. So it, it just keeps expanding and expanding. 
And the last thing, and then we turn it back over to our next segment. I think, uh, we have a 10 minute break if you guys need one. Yeah, everybody want to run off to the bathroom or get up, stretch your legs? Or we want to keep going? Vote. Who wants a break? Who wants a break? Okay. okay. All right. I guess we don't get a break, <laughs> Jeff. No. Done. Hold that bladder. Uh, yes. So if you're playing on design Kristen. equipment, I need a bladder. Is this the best way to How much do you need? Full thing. Full thing? What? Um, usually, it depends on the state, but it's, it's, you don't want it. The, the, all states uh, require that the public can't touch the machine. Uh, so you either put it, if this is your serving counter, it's got to be behind the counter. Uh, if you have more room, you build an ice cream room. Like this is our sound room back here uh, for uh, running uh, our sound boards and cameras and everything else. Um, a room like that would be ideal uh, for making ice cream in, where you have some shelving, uh, you have uh, some freezer space, you can put it in other places, and your ice cream making. And, and there's certain rules that go along with it. And uh, when you're talking to your health department, keep a diary, write everything down. Uh, let's call him Joe the Inspector. Joe is 23 years old, uh, drives a Ford with no chrome on it, and has enough authority to keep you out of business. So you write down what Joe says, and Joe says, I want a dairy tile floor. Uh, you know, $10 million. Uh, write it down. Um, so then you come back to someone like me, or you call me, and say, well, uh, what's on the floor now? It's concrete. It's bare. Okay. The health department will probably allow you to use Rust-Oleum to do a two-stage epoxy. Old people in Florida paint their garages with two-stage epoxy. They put down bright green, bright red, and they sit out there with their car at night and watch TV. It's, it's insane. Um, but you're going to use it to seal the floor, $87 instead of $3,000. So you go back to Joe and say, hey, Joe, on February 6th, you said uh, you wanted a dairy tile floor. Would you accept a two-stage epoxy on that concrete? Oh, sure, that's fine. Write it down. And then when Joe's boss comes in in April to look at everything, and he goes, what's with this floor? Joe approved it on um, February 6th. Oh, well, I taught Joe, so if, if Joe approved it, it's okay with me. So you can't bribe them. You, you can't shoot them and put them in the dumpster. You've got to work with them. So the, and, and, and work with them doesn't mean like my father. I say, hey, Dad, you know, inspector's here. Fine, give them 20 bucks and throw them out. And I said, Dad, this is the 70s. And he goes, fine, give them 40 bucks or throw them out. You have to work with them. And so if you keep a diary, you find out what they want, and then you find simpler ways. The, the most recent thing right now uh, is a grease trap. Well, their idea of a grease trap is McDonald's, where they're pouring 55 gallons of grease down a drain, and they want it kept, and that's going to be a $5,000 grease trap. You don't need a grease trap. You're not, if you are sending any dairy down the drain, uh, you're losing money. That's your, that's your money right there. But you won't win that war either. So, you know, don't fight a war you can't win. Just say, okay, I'll put in a grease trap. Um, and then you come back to them with a literature on a $300 grease trap. And you say, this is going to handle so much and we only do one-tenth of that. And, and he's checked off a box on his list. Okay, fine, you've got the grease trap. Cost you 300 bucks instead of the store being closed for six months while you argue with the city over, you know, do I need a grease trap or not? It, it sounds complex, it's not. Uh, just, it, it's just common sense. So when you ask about how to set it up, it will be the individual store, but we'll be glad to help you. Uh, if the camera can come over this way for a second, I'll just point out one thing. Uh, Christy is working at the sink. The health department does not want the batch freezer right next to the sink because technically dirty water could uh, get into the machine. So we have this barricade of uh, a rack storage here. Is it six feet? Okay, so if you, um, also, if you didn't have the space, I have done, uh, I've gotten approved through health departments where we put up a plastic shield, uh, a, a, a clear plastic shield as a barricade, and then they allowed the machine to be next to it because they knew the water couldn't splash out. Work with your health department. They can be your best friend or your worst enemy. And, and we definitely want to make them your best friend. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, two questions. I'm a rookie at this whole ice cream. Everybody's a rookie I'm in here. I'm in the fitness industry, which is kind of crazy to go do ice cream. But <laughs> I'm wondering if you actually make that. more money when people eat ice cream than you can't get fit. Uh, 
What's the ideal temperature to store your ice cream? Uh, what's the ideal temperature to store your ice cream at? We can do it in the chest freezers at 10 below, and that's fine. It would be good for longer than you should keep it. It would be good for a month or two. Um, these uh, cabinets, the hardening cabinets, go to 25 below. Uh, anything of 10 below uh, or colder is just fine. Uh, that, your, your ice cream will be rock hard, your ices will be rock hard, and they don't deteriorate at all. Um, you know, fishermen and hunters will tell you that if you, uh, you know, catch that great salmon, in fact, I've got some salmon, thanks to Jeff, in my freezer over there. If you can keep it at 10 below, it's going to be good for about six or eight months. If you keep it in your home freezer, part of your refrigerator freezer, and it's at zero, it's only going to be good for one month. So the colder you go, the longer the inventory uh, that you can keep it. And then again, conversely, you know, don't have inventory of a product that's not selling. Just because you've kept it for three months isn't going to make it sell any better. You know, have the, have the guts to say, I love this flavor. I, I love my coffee banana, but everybody else hates it. Don't sell coffee banana. Okay, so as we move on. <laughs> Wait, how did everybody like the turtle ice cream? Excellent. Good. Would you change anything or add anything, take something away in it? No? All right. Well, then I guess I did perfect. Yes, you did. <laughs> we're going to just going to do another flavor, and then we're going to do uh, some questions answered, so you'll have a chance to do ask more questions. Okay, we're going to make hot ice cream, hot ice cream uh, with uh, Kentucky Fire Bourbon. It's like hot cinnamon or what's uh, Fireball, fireball. Uh, right, same thing. So we'll make that. I was going to make the cake batter ice cream now, but I, I've never done it before. I was asked to do it, and I realized that we have to cook the cake batter prior to using it, so I'll do that during lunch. Uh, so not all of you will die. So the formula for this is five quarts. We're going to make a half batch because, uh, you know, it's fireball. Who's, you know, who, who wants that? Uh, what do you mean no? <laughs> Everybody else is going like this. All right. Uh, so it's five, it's a half batch. So five quarts of mix. Uh, we'll pour that right in the machine right now. Five quarts. Now when you're pouring, if you lay this on here, you're going to spill. If you raise it up, you get a thinner stream. That's 25 cents, folks. All right, so five quarts. Nobody's writing because nobody wants this anyway. Why am I making it? Okay. It's five quarts, five ounces of vanilla. Yeah, I know. It's, that's the first one, so it looks like I know what I'm doing. Uh, then we'll add... This is how many ounces? This is 32, uh, plus one that I nailed before. <laughs> uh, no, I bought this last week. It was freezing in Florida, and I, I, we were grocery shopping, and I went next door to the liquor store, and I bought a bottle of this knowing I was going to make it, and I couldn't wait. I needed to warm up. So That's TMI, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll add uh, 24 ounces of this. We'll actually add 24 ounces. Yeah. What are you going to do with the rest of it anyway? Now, once again, I've never made this, so we're winging it. And then honey. Ah, honey. Uh, 20 ounces of honey. No. Uh, this is a full one, huh? Oh, no. Okay. Never mind. Uh, we'll add, how much honey is in here? 
Nice. They do it upside down, so now I can't tell how many ants are in unless I spill it on the floor, because I just threw the cap away. Thirty-two ounces. Now, interesting. Ah, remember we talked about volume versus weight? The label on the outside says 32 ounces, 2 pounds. Oh, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what do they mean? Weight? I'm sure they do. Let's check it out. Why isn't it zero? You have to hit zero. Yeah, okay. Get it in. Uh, two pounds. So, if we need, I'm all confused. If we need 20 ounces, um, how much is that? Like in the bottle, is that half, half a bottle? little over half? Okay, good. I like that. Okay, we'll fire it up. Now in there is simply the, uh, the booze, the vanilla, and the mix, right? And this is all else we have to add, the honey. Honey. So you said, how much did you say? A little more than half? Okay, so that's that, and that, and that, and that's it. Now let me ask you, remember before we said we can make it more or less of anything we want? How would, I'm going to taste it now, how would we make it less? Add more mix, perfect. So this is really foolproof. So what do we add, the whole thing? <laughs> well, you can't have too much honey, right? Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right, I don't know, we'll turn it. Maybe we should add some of these. Right? That can't be bad. These were good, the turtles, right? Yeah. What? Oh, they're in individual things? Oh, please. Now we'll add something else. I, I will help. We'll add something else. Uh, Do you, what should I we will add? unwrap these faster than you've ever seen before. You want these, Jeff? If you want to do it before I get back, but I'm looking for something to add here. Oh. Crushed peanuts? What are we making? Uh, the hot bourbon, right? Well, if you were at a bar, you'd have peanuts with it, right? That has peanuts and chocolate. I don't know. <laughs> Done. Ooh, done? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe a few of these two. I have the leftover. Okay. Um, did you, what is this? Chips? Okay. These haven't been beaten up, have they? No, but. We'll add some chips. Make a note of this in your formula. But I think the peanuts are there. You want the turtles? Um, it's wet, is the thing. Yeah, don't do it. Okay. Don't do it.
You can like break them with your hand. Or we could just eat them. Or we could serve them on the ice cream. As an accoutrement. Not bad. It's boozy because of the the other one wasn't as boozy because it was coffee liqueur. This is that, you know, hot cinnamon stuff. So it has that flavor to it. I'm just trying to tone it down a little with stuff. Like what else? Uh, oh, hang on. Let's see. What do these taste like? They don't really have a flavor. No? Okay. Hmm? Vanilla? There's cherries. Cherries? Cherries? There's uh, red, jam, red raspberry jam, blueberry jam. Whoa. Coconut? There's golden raisins. Whoa. Um, cherries and, uh, let's see, hot cinnamon. What do you think? Cherry or raspberry? No raspberry? Hmm? With cherries? I'm there. <laughs> There's two jars. All right, can I have the other jar there too? These didn't have stems on them, did they? talking. So now we have hot bourbon, cinnamon bourbon or whatever, a little vanilla, honey, and cherries, and some peanuts for a little crunch. If I had more Heath bar, I'd throw that in. What? I put chocolate chips in. Not a lot, though. Uh, we needed more. Uh, there's none in the freezer, is there? The chips? There is? Yeah. I'll take them. I think I saw white chips in there. Yeah. Perfect. Now this completes the recipe. Premier white morsels. And we'll add a few of those. for ingredients and you can't do that with any other batch freezer and just start dumping like he did and that's the best part going down the grocery store you know oh I wonder what that would be like wonder what now that we're talking like. okay we're good you know what all that what, what what I tried to do was temper that hard liquor flavor because it's I'm a bourbon drinker but that's not like bourbon that's that's a fireball type thing. It's really intense. So in the ice cream, I don't think you want it to be so prevalent, so on the surface. So add some more stuff and it'll temper it a little. So what we add? We added some peanuts, little flavor, and we added the cherries. And I left a little of the juice in the cherry uh, jars, a little bit. So now it tastes like a Manhattan. <laughs> It's good, actually. Uh, you'll see, whatever. And then uh, during lunch, I'll make the cake batter, and then we can try that. I don't hold up too much hope for that. Uh, yes? Do you need a liquor license? Okay. No. Okay. Okay. What else? What are we making with Sprite? I am making an Italian ice, but the cat's off to be flat, so it won't knock it Cool. It wouldn't matter. As soon as you do it, it the fizz goes away. Eh, it does when you go to pour it in the machine. I learned if you use very fresh carbonated soda, 
and you mix it with sugar, no problem, but you go to pour it into the machine, oh yeah, it's a volcano. Yeah. All right, everybody write uh, this recipe it down. It's no. Still, it still fizzes a little, but it won't fizz as bad pouring it in. What? It, uh, yeah, that would do it if I had more mix, yeah. Want to do that? No, okay. I think it's okay. Let's see what it tastes like now. What are you doing here? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Go away. Go away. <laughs> Are we saving this for posterity here, or? Different, different. And sometimes on your flavor board, how many flavors do you think you need to start an ice cream store? Eight. Six, four, that's fine. I wouldn't go with four, I'd go with more than that. Twelve, that's fine. Uh, but you always want to have a hook, a hook. I invented adult ice creams maybe 15 years ago. Uh, and I, I had wines, I had rums, I had a lot of liqueurs. And that was my hook back then. I had... Uh, menu uh, uh, flavors on the wall, maybe, uh, I don't know, eight maybe or so. And then I added four adult flavors. And the adult flavors I started with, I was appealing to a certain segment. I added Bailey's. Who was I appealing to there? Is this working? Okay. Women. Women like Bailey's. I added Kahlua, same thing. I put rum raisin in there, and that's a, a great flavor. But it was such a good hook, and it, it caught on like that, that the TV station, Fox News, came to interview me because they said, he's the guy selling booze ice cream. <laughs> Whatever, they gave me... Uh, seven segments on Fox between 7 and 10 a.m. travel time and uh, and boy that was amazing I mean it really but anyway so the booze ice cream started out as a hook and I think you should have some flavors that maybe they don't have or they don't have for instance Monday we made a very unique flavor I've never seen it anywhere peanut butter and jelly ice cream it's basically peanut butter ice cream, chunky peanut butter ice cream, which is delicious. And then we put a swirl of Welsh's grape jelly through it. And it's really good. And nobody's going to make that, right? It was good. It was delicious, see? So try to have a hook. You know, one of the ones that I put up now and then is pina colada. It's a difficult ice cream to make, a lot of ingredients, but Boy, pina colada ice cream, real pina colada, real boozy ice cream. That's a good one. And one that I make because we're in Florida is called Tropic Slam. Tropic Slam. All tropical flavors in it. Right? Very, a lot of complicated recipe. Uh, but anyway, those are all in the book and the kit and all that stuff. So we're uh, ready to roll. What are you making next? I say, what are you making next? Me? Blue Lagoon Italian Ice. Blue Lagoon Italian Ice. Now that's going to be good. Uh, you're fortunate. Last class we made duds. I mean, they weren't good at all. But hey, you win some, you lose some. Uh, now, speaking of win some, lose some, you're going to make some flavors that are duds. They're no good. Uh, I was a big fan of Sambuca. And I thought, wow, that's a no-brainer, Sambuca ice cream. I called it Slambuca. And man, it was good. And nobody bought it. And everybody said it's disgusting. So I took seven gallons of Slambuca ice cream and poured them down the drain. And that's not the first time, and it won't be the last. Uh, when you make something that is no good, don't push it. 
because you know it's no good, dump it. Dump it. What's it cost you? What are seven gallons? Don't, no, never mind. It stays in Vegas, right? Uh, seven gallons of ice cream cost you pocket change. It's, you were making fun of me for uh, making bad flavors. No, no, I, I like the bad flavors. It gives me something to rag on. <laughs> this might be a bad one. I think it's okay, but it might be a bad one. The cake batter will be a bad one. Yeah, why? Then why are we making it? Because you asked me to. You asked me to make it, right? No. Yes, you did. It doesn't work. What? The, fate of the formula doesn't work. I never did it, oh. but I don't think it's going to be any good. Okay. Uh, I can make something else if you want. No, we'll try it. Okay. It's my last flavor, so I'll deal this shit yeah, out right after Okay, that. you'll duck out while we're <laughs> choking Yes, on sir. How many times do you flush that machine to know it's clean? Do I clean it? Uh, how many times? You flush it with water. How many times do you flush the machine with water? Good question, which we went over in class. If you get your daily run properly in order, and Steve, Steve is wrong on this, I'll just say it flat out. I know I shouldn't have said that, right? I know. Uh, the, the way to arrange your order of making ice cream is not color. It's only one thing. It's inclusions. The stuff you're going to put in the ice cream. You could, well, yeah, we started with chocolate. <laughs> we started with chocolate because there was nothing else in it. It was a smooth ice cream of chocolate. And from there, we went to the white ice creams. And that's fine. You rinse it if there are inclusions that you don't want to sneak into the next flavor. For instance, chocolate chips and coconut is next. People are going to think you got bugs in your ice cream. So you would rinse it. Uh, peanut butter, always the last thing you're going to make. Coconut, next to last thing you're going to make. Because you'll never be able to get those strands, we use real coconut, strands of coconut out of the ice cream. It's always going to find its way in there. Uh, and chocolate chips have a way of hiding in the machine. Uh, peanut butter is a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's ice cream. So you rinse when you don't want anything to spill over from the first to the second as far as inclusions. If you're making strawberry ice cream and your next flavor is cherry or grape or uh, vanilla fudge, van cherry vanilla, you don't have to rinse. It's okay. Not going to hurt anything. Uh, you'll get the hang of that real soon. Uh, but it's, it's not as... And rinsing is merely taking six quarts of water, put it in the machine, turn it on, and then dump it out. It's not, not bad. Ooh, check out the color of this. <laughs> uh, we could have actually added cake batter to this. I'm curious, how are you going to make the cake? Um, we have ways. Okay. He doesn't know. Yes, I, I have it figured out. I'm going to microwave, I'm going to whisk a mixture of it, and then microwave it, stir it, microwave it, stir it, microwave it, stir it, and then it'll be usable. What do I know? I don't know. Uh, Steve emailed me last week and he said, this flavor is taking the country by storm. Can you make it? Cake batter ice cream. I never even heard of it. So I went online, I looked up cake batter ice cream and I found out that the one place that makes cake batter ice cream is Cold Stone. So I checked with Cold Stone and I saw their ingredients. And I checked the ingredients and, okay, so this is what they tell you to use. So I bought it and then I was going to mix it with the, the cream and add it to the freezer. But then I see, do not eat raw batter. That's after you mix it because you put egg in there. I'm not putting egg in there. Well, that, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah? You think? That's, that's the chef. That, that's, this isn't a batter, this is a mix. Once you add your oil, eggs, and butter, that's a batter. So what are you saying? Don't eat raw batter because of the eggs. So if I don't add the egg? 
I think your ice cream's gonna taste Get like a spoon. flour. Get a spoon. Let's see if you want to eat it. I will eat it because it doesn't have. <laughs> yes. All the flavoring that makes it Hold taste it. like cake batter. What? All the flavoring that makes it taste like cake batter is in the bag. The only way you can't consume it is once the egg is in. So if you were to just dissolve that into your cream or your dairy mix, then it will taste like cake batter. You don't have to actually like make a batter. Done. I want to go to the taste Done. Like flour. Where do you live? Okay. Thank you. Tampa, Dunedin. Tampa? Dunedin. Come over. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, I've just got an official word that it's the flour. You can't do this. We're going to have to come up with another flavor. No. Absolutely. No, I'm telling you. No. We cannot it do it. Like no, the flour is going to cause the problem. Right, but if he was to just use that, that would taste like flour. I got a great idea. If, if, Let's if, argue. If. <laughs> another flavor? It. Another flavor. Okay. Have blueberry. Who's going to pay me for the cake mix? <laughs> that was off camp. Hi. <laughs> I want to tell you, I got no respect for you. Know, the mm -hmm. Is that good? I made that. Um, I didn't like it. But let's keep going. Anybody ever watch Hogan's Heroes? I know nothing. There's a sign over there. Notice. You see it on the wall? It says... It says, food allergens are used in consumables produced in this area. You should have that hanging up in your store. And then you can do this. Yeah, you know, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, the day you make anything with nuts, you're done. You can never put anything in. You can sanitize it, you can sterilize it. It's going to have the nut stuff in it. Okay. Red rat, pink lemonade, and add throw in some okay. pepper. Or, Jeff, you can do your cream of coconut and coconut, coconut ice. You cream. don't have the uh, the other ingredient. That's right. I'll find something. I'll make something. I won't leave them shorthanded. You have till after lunch. You have great nuts what? and golden raisins. You have till raisins. after lunch. Yeah. So that's plenty of time. Plenty. Of time. You have grape nuts and golden raisins. I'll find something. It's not that hard. Well, I like the cinnamon. So much for the cake batter ice cream. You and your big ideas. Oh no! Oh no! Go well, no! I have made a birthday cake before. Um, sorry, and it was with the funfetti cake uh, mix. You bake the cake, or well, actually, I made it for um, Mike's granddaughter's birthday. So his wife had baked the cake, and. I took the cake, crumbled it up, put it in the machine along with a jar of vanilla frosting. It was very good. What works really good is, and I was going to do this, but he wanted cake batter ice cream. But I was going to make the cake and then throw it in the ice cream and that would have been delicious. But no, he wanted cake batter ice cream. <laughs> All right, we're ready. You ready? You know what it feels like to be smacked with a, a, a three-foot-long salmon that's frozen <laughs> that you gave me as a present? I don't it's go, right in there. I don't get it's kinky right like that. There. I prefer just the bat. Okay, we ready? The, the, the compressor went off, and we're ready to roll. And there she blows. Heavy. Let's see. I think the nuts were a great addition. <laughs> mm, 
just what? a little one. Fireball. Oh, okay. Good catch. I know you had a little one. Ooh, that is heavy. Very heavy. Very heavy. So this has got alcohol in it, remember, so if you don't drink alcohol, don't drink, don't eat this. That's the hardest part. I've said, I think I say this every seminar. The hardest part about doing this is not licking your fingers. <laughs> but I think I'm okay. A few years ago, alcohol ice creams were called uh, alcohol infused, which sounded very sophisticated and boring as hell. Uh, now it's referred to as boozy ice cream. And, and just saying it sounds like fun. And boozy I invented ice cream. it. I invented it. I think a millennial invented it, and you don't pass for a millennial. No, I invented ever. it. Is there 11 people that would like a turtle on top of theirs? No, you don't want to ruin it. It's like mixing you. flavors. You know. Didn't ask Don't do it. <laughs> right. What you going to do? There you go. No, you don't want to do that. Any questions so I can break up these two from fighting? <laughs> Anybody at all? Yes. Did you guys change up any of the settings on uh, the machine between two. these ice creams? Uh, I think we've been running everything on the same uh, homemade ice cream setting. Uh, we're looking to get the maximum uh, volume uh, of the product. Um, one thing I will say, and of course Jeff doesn't agree with me, that uh, you taste the ice cream here, especially say a vanilla. And it's going to have one taste as it comes out of the machine. In fact, you might say, uh, Steve didn't put in enough vanilla. Uh, because if you taste it tomorrow, it's going to have a more intense flavor. It, it actually improves uh, with the freezing process. So don't judge your ice cream until uh, after it's been frozen. That, that's the best way to tell. When it's warm like this, it tends to be bland. And if it's too cold, you go into some ice cream parlors and the server's having trouble scooping it, uh, you can barely tell the flavor because it's so cold it freezes your taste buds. Yeah. So the happy balance is you know, being able to scoop it easily. And uh, if you have uh, higher sugar content, it's going to make it a softer product. So you put your high sugar content flavors, like the alcohol, in the four corners of the freezer. This, this freezer is wrapped in uh, refrigeration uh, piping. So across the front, a tub gets hit with one line of refrigeration. Uh, same over here. But at this corner here, it's getting one line here and one line here. So if we put the products that tend to run soft, like say um, a bourbon vanilla with real bourbon in it, put it in the corner, it'll scoop easily as well as the ones in the middle. If you go into a store and you see the server okay with one product and struggling with the other, they don't know that trick. And it's just that simple. Higher the sugar content or alcohol, use your four corners. Jeff talked about it when uh, he said hardening the ice cream. He goes for the four corners of the box when he's looking uh, to put in, you know, fresh product that he's just made. So, little trip, little tip. <laughs> so what would you change on this ice cream? Anything? Nothing. It's perfect. What do we call it? What are we going to call this? Perfect. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think we didn't put you guys. Hot. We'll call it hot. Yeah, it's hot. Hot. Is it too hot? All right, let's do another analysis. Oh. No comments? I'm it not won't hearing, hurt my feelings. I'm not hearing overwhelming approval. No, I think it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's... Would you store it, sell it in your store? Uh, it oh. is interesting. Uh, would I sell it in the store? Probably so, not. So we've got an ice cream you wouldn't sell in the store that people are calling interesting. It sounds like it's not going to be something that you want to widespread. Yeah, maybe I should make uh, Sharknado ice cream. Yeah, I know my failures. <laughs> I yeah. haven't made one yet. But I'll tell you what. Some of us learn from their failures. I'm going to put this in the freezer there. Yeah. It'll be gone. Yeah, we're going to throw it out. <laughs> we'll give it to the factory, you, guys. You won't even be on I-4 yet. <laughs> no, we can't have a bunch of boozed up employees. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Why do you yeah. think I'm their favorite yeah. in the office? <laughs> Anybody... 
Excuse me. See, somebody in the audience just made an astute comment, and he's right. Well, they'll be here. The peanuts and the cherries that we added made it palatable. I mean, without that, it wouldn't have worked. So remember, when you're, when you're playing around, you know, just go to your shelf, go to your supply room, and look around and see what you want to do. Maybe half the fireball. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. If you were to do it again, would you use less fireball? No. Okay. <laughs> And, you know, no. maybe it was the medium itself, because I made Fireball a number of years ago, but I made it as a coffee ice cream, and it was spectacular. Uh, so maybe the Fireball and coffee go well together, uh, but Fireball, uh, is Fireball a whiskey? Uh, so maybe a whiskey doesn't go with fruity stuff. That, that would be my uh, conclusion on it. The point is, when you're done making ice cream for the day, and you still want to play, go look around. The way I started in this business, I didn't know anything. Not that I know much now. I went to the supermarket with a wagon, and I went up and down the aisles, every aisle, thinking what would make good ice cream. And I bought some Jello mixes, some flavors. I bought some cake mixes. I bought a whole bunch of different cookies. I threw candies in there. I threw apple pie filling, I threw coconut, whatever I could. $175 worth of stuff. And then I went home and played. And that's, uh, that's how it started. So you can do the same thing. The only constant, the basis for all this is the mix, the ice cream mix. Once you have that, go for it. You know, whatever you think. Uh, Oreo cookies. I make one ice cream called Candy Bar. I went into the storage room in the store, and I had a little bit of Oreos, some blonde Oreos. I had Famous Amos, because I used to make that. And I had Kit Kats. And I threw them all in and called it Candy Bar. And then I did it again in a different thing, and I called it Cookie Monster. And those are two very popular flavors at the store. And it was leftovers. So... You know, don't think you, I mean, I'm going to give, well, I give people a hundred recipes. And make no mistake, you could run your store for the rest of your life and your kid's life just on those. They're all perfect recipes. We play around here, we, we fool around, we invent stuff. But those are tried and true, saleable recipes. Ones that everybody loves. Uh, and with a hundred of them, you could go forever. But eventually, that three-letter word is going to creep in, right? What's the word? Ego. You're going to, you're going to say, oh, I can do better than that. Or, or how about if we add some uh, Sambuca to <laughs> the ice cream? OK, We're I'm going to make uh, Blue Lagoon Italian ice. Uh, this is a flavor that Christy came up with. Uh, and it's going to consist of one and a half quarts of lemon lime soda. Uh, we took the tops off the uh, soda last night so that it loses its fizz. We want the flavor, not the fizz. When Christy first made it at home on her, Emery Thompson, uh, she said she just poured the soda in, and it was spewing out everywhere because of the, uh, the, the foam and the agitation. Um, it's also going to be one and a half quarts of blue Hawaiian punch, one quart of pineapple juice, and two pounds of sugar. So uh, we'll hand these out and uh, give this a try. I need to buy one of them can openers. Electric? No, the the old fashioned kind where it pops the hole in it. Oh. So I came up with this formula due to a drink that I made for a baby shower. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you come up with your formulas? What do you do? It's just as simple as that. You know, you take your your mom's dessert recipe or a family tradition that you make at Thanksgiving. Maybe there is a very good uh, sweet potato casserole someone makes in your family. Yes, you can make a sweet potato ice cream. Would it be good? I don't know. But you can. You can try it. Uh, so that's just as simple as, as all of those things. Now, as Steve said, it was the pouring it into the machine is what I learned made it completely foam out. <laughs> uh, Doing that with flat soda, it's not as bad, but it still does it just a little bit, but it's a lot more tolerable. So we need to measure out two pounds of sugar, right? So that's the rule of thumb 
with the CB350 is always have at least four quarts of liquid and two pounds of sugar. That's going to be your basic formula for anything that's a water ice, Italian ice, sorbet, sorbetto, uh, is that uh, two pounds of sugar, four quarts of water ratio. Uh, the only time you would deviate from that would be if you're putting something uh, really uh, sugary into it, uh, like when we make the blueberry this afternoon, that's going to increase the sugar content. We might cut back a little bit on the sugar. Otherwise, uh, you need that ratio in order to uh, freeze properly. Uh, if you have just, if you tried to make ice cream with just milk, it would be uh, too much liquid uh, in order to freeze properly. And also you need the sugar in there. Jeff and I got uh, discussing a long time ago about sugar and he called me a cheapskate for not buying um, Domino sugar. Uh, I was buying the store brand. Well, we did a class one day and it was uh, Jeff's justification that turns out the gentleman worked for uh, Domino Sugar and he said all sugar is not the same. Domino is, it says on it, pure cane sugar from sugar cane. Whereas sugar uh, is beet sugar and it has a whole different uh, 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 taste profile. It's not as strong, uh, it doesn't freeze the same. So it's worth the extra money in this case uh, to buy uh, the uh, cane sugar. Um, Jeff was talking about, and, and he's mostly right, when working with the liquor ice creams, you can usually find a good su uh, substitute. Um, Grand Marnier liqueur is uh, $50 a bottle, and there are uh, substitutes out there for it. You don't have to use um, uh, the most expensive Prussian rum to make rum raisin ice cream. But I do wonder, going back to the other flavor, would it have made a difference if it really was Fireball? Um, I like the idea of using Fireball because it's banned in Sweden. Uh, they said it's just not fit for human consumption. Well, that makes it you know, a great little advertising uh, gimmick. But I, um, so sometimes you do use brand names, other times you don't. Jeff is fond of saying that you know, there's no substitute for Oreo cookies. Uh, there used to be a cookie called Hydrox. And my uh, wife grew up on Hydrox and swears that they were better than uh, Oreo cookie, but then who went out of business? You know, Oreo's still here. So uh, sometimes brand names, sometimes not, but when you're doing Italian ice, uh, pure cane sugar does make a difference. It's worth the extra cost. Now when you do work with Italian ices and you have to do sugar, um, we like to go ahead and mix it in here with the whatever you're using, whether it's juice and sodas or your water, whichever. Uh, reason is, is sugar acts like sandpaper. If you were to pour the sugar straight into the machine, one, you know, it's going to get granulate, granules on the sides of the throat and all of that, and it kind of sprinkles outside. Um, but it acts like sandpaper to those blades. It's not going to hurt your machine. You're not going to damage your machine or your blades, but you're just having your blades last longer by going ahead and mixing the sugar with whatever you have. Now, you don't have to mix it continuously until it's 100% dissolved. I was just standing here stirring while Steve was talking. Um, you can if you choose to. Um, if you see a little bit of dribble of sugar left in your container after you pour it in the machine, that's okay too. There's enough sugar content to not even stress about yeah, it. Yeah, you're talking about two pounds of sugar, so a little stream of sugar is not going to change the formula uh, one way or the other. So you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to boil. Anytime they talk about boiling water and sugar, uh, keep in mind that when you boil water, you're taking all the oxygen out of the water. And oxygen adds to the flavor. I learned that decades ago going down to the Virgin Islands where we'd have to boil the water because it was rainwater. And boiled water is flat tasting. Uh, it, it really kills the taste. So straight out of the tap, and uh, you don't need to boil it just to put sugar in. Yep. Yeah, you got all your sugar? No. Um, so when you also make Italian ices, you don't have to always use just water. You can use exactly what I did, a juice, a juice, and a soda. Uh, you can do, or pop, depending on what, country, what part of the country you're from. Uh, so I have done, you know, a cranberry orange, where it's just orange juice and cranberry uh, juice. And that comes out a very beautiful pink color. It is sweet and tart at the same time, and your sugar that's added to it. You can do just a plain orange Italian ice with simply orange juice, uh, which is a lot of sugar, and then you're adding two pounds of sugar. So it's four quarts of orange juice, two pounds of sugar. Sugar and sugar, that's going to take a long time to freeze. 
um, but it's a very beautiful product. It's it's great. Get the high pulp orange juice because your customers would want to see you know the pulp in there and your orange juice uh, or your orange Italian ice thinking you really did hand squeeze those oranges. Um, some people have asked, well, what kind of juices can I use and not use? So if you're working with the pineapple juice, definitely you can use this just straight if you wanted to. It's 100% juice. If you try to work with juices that aren't, I have tried that, or like a lemonade, like the brand Simply Lemonade, it is very diluted. So I have tried to make a lemon Italian ice with Simply Lemonade. It was horrible. It was very bland. It was very blah. Uh, it wasn't strong enough. So if the juice is a diluted juice, I don't recommend using that. Try to stick with 100% fruit juices if you can. And of course, Hawaiian Punch is a juice, but it's got a lot of additives in it. Um, other alternatives. You have, let me grab one more. I-Rice. I-Rice makes Italian ice bases. And there's some things some fruits you'll notice that need help. Uh, mangoes. Mangoes are kind of blah on their own having a mango base or if you have a mango concentrate or if you buy a mango juice straight um, 100% that'll be okay. But sometimes they need a little help. Uh, blueberry is an example. They're very bland. We'll be working with blueberries today so having some blueberry extract and blueberry jam or jelly that always helps too. Um, margarita. Uh, I'm excited to try this one because I think if I was to use just a plain margarita mix um, that they have, I think it's too salty. Um, so I think, you know, that's when I rice would come in handy for times like that to make it. And then just throw in some tequila and you have a margarita Italian ice or boozy ice. I rice is out of Philadelphia and they specialized originally in Italian ice flavors. Uh, we like to do everything fresh and natural. When I make lemon ice, I'm using fresh squeezed lemon juice not the real brand reconstituted juice. It's got a horrible aftertaste. Uh, but there are a lot of flavors that don't exist in nature. Or another example, the mango. Uh, mangoes, uh, if you buy them in the store, there's five different varieties. Uh, they seem to only be ripe for one day and they're very expensive. So the I rice is, is the best mango I've ever run into. So if I was doing an Italian ice business, I would have a combination of uh, fresh fruit, flavors, uh, that I'm buying fresh uh, frozen fruit at the supermarket, like strawberry, opening up the bags after I've thawed them and just pour them in the machine, uh, using the eye rice. And when we make the blueberry today, we're actually going to use an extract to help bolster uh, the, fluid, the flavor of the blueberry. So there are times when you just use uh, an extract. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with using all those different uh, tools available to you to come out to the best flavor that customers are going to love. Any questions? Yes. So, you, obviously with the Italian ice, you don't get as much over on as you do with, with uh, dairy product. Do you add more into the machine so you can still make a large batch? Or, so, you know? he just asked, you don't have overrun when you work with Italian ice because there's no fat content. So, very good observation for that. You can add more. When you're working with the smaller machine, it's still good to stay at your four quarts of liquid and your two pounds of sugar. Your two pounds of sugar is obviously going to raise that volume a little bit higher. When you're working with a floor model, you can definitely add a little bit more. So an example, if you were to run homemade ice cream at 100% overrun, the max you can do is 12 quarts. If you were to do an Italian ice, which doesn't have hardly any expansion, the only expansion you do have is your water and your sugar expanding to freeze a little bit. You can add 14 quarts. Um, you know, same concept goes for gelato or custard because you have a lower overrun. So yes, you can in the larger models, but it's still best to stay around the four quarts for the CB350 because there's not a whole lot of extra room in there and you want it to be able to freeze well. Any other questions? Yes. I, I spoke to the folks at High Rice after watching some of your videos and they had talked about stabilizers mm -hmm. in the Italian ice. Um, he didn't have much to add on it. I just was curious about so his question was is what of our th what our thoughts are on stabilizers I am against it um, if you ask my daughter who is a teenager who's 15 and a half she will be able to tell you right away what product has stabilizer in it uh, it does have a difference it has a texture difference um, a stabilizer is exactly how it says it stabilizes your product 
If you are going to an event or doing something like a wholesale, you have to have your stabilizers because you need it to last longer than four or five days. If you are just doing something that you know is a quick turnaround in a push cart or in your store or a location, try to stay away from it if you can. Um, it doesn't melt. It's weird. You know, when you scoop it and you put it in a cup and you drive home, it's still going to be in the same shape it was that they scooped it. Um, if you have it fresh, it's going to melt a lot faster. So always try not to if you, if you don't have to. Any, any other questions? No? So, oh, yes. Yeah. So overrun is your air content. The faster your dasher goes, the more air it's going to put into your product. The slower your dasher goes, the less air it's putting into your product. When you work with Italian ice, there is no expansion really because there's no fat. If you were to take sugar, water, and some strawberries in a bowl with a whisk, you whisk it and nothing's going to happen, right? There's no fat content. You do the same thing with heavy whipping cream, it's going to start expanding because there's a fat, dairy is fat. Uh, so that's what overrun is. The less overrun, the more thicker and heavier and more dense your ice cream is going to have that texture and feel, kind of like a gelato. The more overrun you have, the more air content, the more fluffier your ice cream is going to be. It's easy to remember uh, the word overrun and what it means. Uh, consider it proof in alcohol. Uh, if you've got a hundred proof rum, it means it's 50% alcohol and 50% other stuff, inert stuff. So we call it a hundred proof, but it's a, the alcohol content's 50%. So on ice cream, let's use the word proof. We have a hundred proof ice cream. That means it's 50% dairy and 50% air. Same idea, except we get rid of the word proof and put in overrun and it's still 50% dairy and 50% air. And air is critical to a product because without it, a, a good example is the birthday cake that we're not going to make. Uh, that would be uh, 100 proof or 100% overrun. It's going to be half baked goods and half air. Everybody knows what a birthday cake tastes like. It's delicious. And everybody knows what a pound cake tastes like. A pound cake is going to be a very low proof or low overrun, maybe 25%. Very, very dense. And you can ask yourself, which one would you rather have a second piece of? A birthday cake or a pound cake? Most people will say the birthday cake because it's light, it's airy, it's delicious, and it leaves you feeling refreshed. So that's, that's the only difference, and that's what air is doing. Um, we don't worry about the cost in our business because we know whatever we sell is going to be very uh, profitable. Uh, but we do have to worry about haagen -Dazs. When we put them in the business, they opened up a series of stores around the country. They're all closed, as far as I know. A few of the Ben & Jerry's are still left open for promotional purposes, but they're also, they're both low air content ice creams. So as I was mentioning before this morning, before we got going, a four ounce scoop of haagen -Dazs is very little. It's, it's like nuclear waste. It's, it's very dense. A four ounce scoop of homemade ice cream is falling off the cone. So from a visual standpoint and five dollar cost, which would you rather have? The one that's falling off the cone or the one that's very dense? More importantly, haagen -Dazs realized that uh, out in front of their store they had a trash can so that people after they finished their cone could throw away the napkin, not be all over the streets. Well, they were finding half-eaten ice cream cones because the product is so dense that it just left you feeling full. If you buy haagen ice cream, I guarantee if you're a male, well, first off, if you're a male, you, on your way home, you eat, bite into the container. Women don't know this. You bite into the container with your teeth uh, because you don't have a spoon and you're driving home. And then when we get home, we smooth it over with our finger so you can't see that we ate it. And then we realize there's an indent in it, so we get really smart, and we grab a spoon, and we stick it in it and start eating it right away, right in front of our wife. And our wife says, leave that alone. That's for the Thompsons coming for dinner tonight. And we just got away with eating it with our teeth on the way home. But the point is, with haagen -Dazs, you're going to eat a little bit, maybe when you first get home, a bite. You're going to have a little bit for dinner, maybe a little like me at 10.30 at night. You pick at that pint of haagen -Dazs. But if you bring home a, a half gallon of Bluebell, 
you're probably going to be pull, pulling out larger portions and larger scoops. So the very dense ice cream has its place in business. It doesn't work well in retail. It works beautifully in uh, pint sales. So if I'm doing pints out of these machines, I'm going to go for a low air, air content, low overrun. But again, like I said this morning, what people really eat is not fat content or overrun, it's flavor. You have a great flavor and it's going to sell big. I think we are pretty darn close. Wait, I'll let you guys tell me. And that's been 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes. Don't, don't mind that, that's from prior. <laughs> what do you guys think? Yes? No? We ready? Hold on. A little bit? Let me give you a fresh one so you don't have the liquid in the bottom. I have, oh, I have it here. That one. Oh, can everybody see? No? Yes? What do you think? Ready? Yeah? Okay. Now you saw Christy turned off the refrigeration. If she'd left it on towards the end, it would start banging and knocking because it's freezing to the walls. Well, wow, that's beautiful. It's very pretty. So if you noticed, it went in green for like a teal color and it came out nice and pretty blue. Hence Blue Lagoon. <laughs> or you can call it tidal wave, change it to whatever you want. No dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see this being a very good cream ice. Uh, as Jeff always teaches, three, two, one. A cream ice is nothing more than taking an Italian ice formula and adding a bit of uh, the ice cream mix to it. Or if you were doing it from scratch, uh, either half and half or heavy cream, but smaller amounts of it. And that will make it a cream ice. The old-fashioned term for cream ice is sherbet. But sherbet was always sticky and gummy because they threw in stabilizers. And sherbet seemed to only come in about three flavors. Uh, cream ice, you can do as many flavors as you can invent. So both are good products. And always have fun with the names. Like I just, you know, if you're at an event like let's say a splash park or you're at a, a event that has like a water ride or something, you can call this, you know, wipeout. Um, so anything to attract the kids and cater to kids because that's where your money's at <laughs> for events. What's that, Steve? Hold on, I don't want to get it on your hand. Thank you. Christy is serving it the way they would serve it on the West Coast, in a cup with a spoon. This is a squeeze cup. Now, anything west of the Hudson River, you ask a paper supplier for squeeze cup, they're going to look at you deer in the headlights. Uh, to them, it's called a pleated water cup, pleated like a lady's dress. And the way we eat this, no spoon, very low cost, we just squeeze it up and eat it that way. Oh, that is delicious, Christy. Thank you. Mm. These are only made by one company, Solo. That's where Christy started working. She was, doing, she was running production lines of the uh, Solo Red Cups. Um, I feel Solo you makes what? these. It's a, uh, they come in different sizes. This is actually three and a half ounces, a three and a half ounce cup, but once you crown it over, it's four ounces. So thanks to McDonald's, it's a quarter pound of ice, ice Italian ice. How great is that? But that's a lot of fun to eat it that way. And, you know, great for the environment, no spoons, no plastic cups, it's, it's all just paper. Pleated water cup. You guys will have to let me know how you like this mm. one. That's so good, we better keep that for ourselves. Now, you know, we call it Italian ice. Down in Philadelphia, they give it a horrible name. Water, water ice. You know, water ice. Um, it's the same stuff. Up in Rhode Island, it's called uh, slush, you know, like a 7-Eleven. And um, there is a difference in all these products. And you won't hear this anywhere else. I mean, the most secretive business in the world is Italian ice. Using the bigger machine, the formula would be, seven, for a lemon ice, would be seven pounds of sugar, 
uh, 14 quarts of water and two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice. That's a New York ice. You go down to Philadelphia, and that seven pounds of sugar, they like it smoother and creamier than a New York ice. So it becomes eight pounds of sugar. That's the only difference between a water ice and an Italian ice, and nobody else will tell you that. And what's a granita? A granita is a coarse ice. They sell that up in Rhode Island, and they sell that in, uh, in areas of Brooklyn where they only speak Italian. And a granita, or granite, is the same formula but six pounds of sugar. Very, very coarse. It tends to lose its flavor, in my opinion, but it sells a lot of machines, so I have to promote it too. But it's all the same formula. We're just adjusting the sugar. The higher the sugar content, the smoother the ice. That, that's simple. No stabilizers in here. No chemicals whatsoever. Good throat freeze. So what do you guys think? Good, good. Um, and you can taste that Sprite in there. Now, when I did a test run with a root beer, Italian ice, a customer wanted to know, have, have, have anybody done that before? Just to use straight root beer. No water, no nothing. Root beer and sugar. Um, that's how I learned about the carbonation and the whole volcano thing. Uh, when I did it with <laughs> flat soda, carbonated soda, and then everybody knows the soda stream, uh, concentrate to make your own soda. That's what I used, but I'm sure you can, you know, from Green Mountain or from Weber Flavors, buy a root beer concentrate, but that's what I had. Um, everybody preferred the flat soda. Uh, when they tried it with the carbonated one, when they took a bite, they kind of went, you know, they were like, wow, they could feel that carbonation there. Uh, so everybody did vote for the, the flat root beer one, which worked very well. It was just straight root beer and sugar, no water. Any questions on Italian ice right now? Yes. So this you would just freeze like you would the ice cream either in that or in the freezer there? Yes, to hold on to it. And uh, I, I can keep it almost indefinitely. Uh, you, you could make it in February and sell it in August. In fact, that's what my wholesale customers do. Uh, Little Jimmy's, Via Veneto, Rosati, uh, all, all the big names in wholesale <laughs> ice. Uh, everyone uses Emory Thompson's. And uh, they're making it actually in, uh, say, April to sell to you in August because their demand is so high. And I often tell people, if you want to get into the business and you don't have any money, uh, but you want to get into the frozen dessert business, start with a push cart and buy some Italian ice. Buy it from Little Jimmy's. They'll ship it down to you. At least it gets you into the business and it gets you selling it. And what you do right now in February, or even better in December and January, is you start looking at a 50-mile radius around from your home and say, well, there's an art festival in Winter Park, Florida. There's a rodeo up in Ocala. Uh, there's a, a car race over in St. Pete. And you call those places up and say, how much to bring my push cart uh, to sell at your place? And they'll have a set price for you. And you bring a push cart and you buy, bring ice that's commercial ice. It's not as, anywhere near as good as this and the flavors aren't as exotic. But it'll get you into the business. It'll get you making money. And then this time next year, you can come to one of our classes. And uh, hey, Mike, everyone's freezing to death. I'm watching them. Uh, if we could adjust the thermostat above sub-zero. Um, you, can, you can start making money right away. And then we'll transform you into making your own Italian ice. All my formulas that are all super secret, and Christie's formulas, are all up at emerythompson.com. Christy has a new uh, cookbook out. Uh, how many recipes? There are 111 recipes from homemade ice cream to gelato to cream ice, Italian ice, and sorbet. And so all these recipes are in there uh, with more to come. Not these. <laughs> Not these. These are brand new. This will be in the second edition. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but they're all there for you. We give, my attitude towards business is completely different from everyone else's. Everyone else says, you buy a machine from me and I'll teach you how to make vanilla. We do it just the opposite. We're going to teach you everything that we know uh, about the business. And we're going to put it all into classes. We're going to put it into videos. Uh, Jeff's going to put it into his course and, and his class. Uh, we teach you absolutely everything before you ever spend a dime. Um, I had a, a friend once who, um, she was a boat captain. She had her pilot's license, you know, so, you know, driving big barges. And she thought maybe she'd uh, go into the Italian ice business and ice cream business. And she came to one of my classes up in the Bronx. And at the end of the class, she said, you know what? 
it's too much work for me. I'd rather be the captain of a ship and I just stand up in the bridge and, and rule the world. And I thought to myself, you know what? That's a great answer because she found out before ever spending a single dime or changing her lifestyle that either this was the business for me or uh, I just don't want to work that hard. So nothing wrong with that, but we're going to give you all the tools and we do give you all the tools at emerythompson.com and at Jeff's uh, X H I P P I E E E E E. See, even I get P -P -E -E. it wrong. P P E E. P P E E. Don't forget to P P and E E. Uh, Wait before. Sounds like a parent. Um, so we give you all the information for free, and uh, you take it from there. We're gonna. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. yet? Uh, okay. You normally do this. Do you want to do it? Uh, I'll. Yeah. You do, Jess. I'll do okay. yours. Okay. So there's two books that you can buy today, uh, Jeff's and um, ours that we do have. Jeff's recipes are very, very good. These are tried and true, what has successfully been made and sold in an ice cream store. Um, so definitely I would snag one of these. And Christy's book uh, is just out, uh, came out at Christmas. And uh, how many recipes? 111. 111 recipes in there, but also uh, a fun history of Emory Thompson. We've been here 119 years and in in 119 years, you can imagine there's been all sorts of interesting stuff go on and, and fun things. Um, even to stories like um, during World War II, if a pilot fell off the aircraft carrier with his jet or he crashed and, uh, with his propeller plane, uh, the destroyers would rush to save the, the, uh, the pilot. Not out of the goodness of their heart, because whatever destroyer got to the poor bugger first got 10 gallons of ice cream made on Emory Thompson batch freezer on the, on the aircraft carrier uh, sent over to the destroyer that night. So there was great competition to save the pilot. Little stories like that. Come are in on. Here. And well, there's, there's vintage <laughs> ads as well because, you know, it's It was done by National Geographic, <laughs> Jeff. It's 119. They won't lie. 119 year old company so there's many vintage photos um, you know of our very first prototypes and everything like that in there if you would like to see the book um, out of its wrapper you can go see Kendall in the front office uh, she has a book and you can kind of finger through it and look through it and see if that's something that you would like to purchase do we have the picture of my older sister holding the diaper when she was two uh, years old at the which beach. one gay or Carol Carol no <laughs> no that'll be the next book. well she she's in there but I don't think she's holding the the, the diaper so <laughs> made ice cream out of that <laughs> mm, made ice cream out of that. <laughs> I was I was younger than her. I was zero. Um, do you, do if you, you have more questions, we're gonna we can answer some questions for a bit. Probably uh, let them take a little break, and then we can do. Q or do you want to just go straight to lunch? What do you say? Do you want to uh, see what hap Well, we know what happens. He said break. <laughs> break. You okay. want to do lunch? Do you guys want to ready for lunch? Uh, sit and do Q and A? No, after let's a just do break? lunch, huh? <laughs> well, I need to set up for that, but you guys do so what you got to do. We'll do lunch, and um, you can keep asking questions uh, as we go along. So if you'd like to get up and walk around a bit, um, we'll be making some more product after more products after lunch, and then we'll give you a tour of the factory. Okay, ready. That's a new voice in the sky. <laughs> Was that you, Mike? <laughs> So I found that some ingredients, and we'll make dark chocolate mint ice cream. Is that all right? Or if you want to vote, we can make chocolate cherry ice cream. Uh, who wants the dark chocolate mint ice cream? That's it. <laughs> nice, Holly. You have to be the, the dissenting. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So the ingredients, this is also one of the, let's put the mix in. This is one of those secret ingredients. It's not Hershey syrup, it's Hershey's Special Dark. Special Dark. It's, it's just a different product than regular Hershey syrup. Very good. So we'll uh, put the mix in. She tells me we're a little shy of 10 quarts. So will that matter? Not in this ice cream. So let's put this in here. Got your 25 cents ready? 
Okay. When you uh, buy the bladders, you'll, you should freeze some in case supply chain, whatever. When you freeze them, remove them from the box. There's two in a box. Take them out of the box. Now you have the loose bladders. Stack them up right on top of each other in the freezer, but with paper towel between them, and you won't have any problems. Then when they freeze up hard as a rock, you just lift them and they come right out. Stack them without the boxes, paper towel between them. They didn't do that here. That's why they're all a mess. They put them in the boxes in the freezer. My cat knows not to do that. Oh, you're all still here. We were just relating the story of how smart it is to load the boxes of the frozen bladders in the freezer. It's perfect. Yeah. Why are you saying that? <laughs> That's an inside joke. All right, and we'll add uh, about a quart of, uh, of this stuff, which is the same as the Giardelli dark chocolate powder. Uh, we'll add a quart. Is that the Forbes? Yes. Because I don't have my stuff here. And we'll add some Hershey's Dark, special dark. Uh, we'll add this much. And then we can always taste it afterwards. Now for the hint of mint, we'll take these uh, candy canes that were in a box over there, probably since Christmas last year, and we'll just grind them up real quick. If this, if we find that this doesn't give us enough of the, I don't want really heavy mint, it's like a hint of mint. If this doesn't give us enough, we have some uh, pure peppermint extract. But we'll try this first. We'll use about that much. Uh, now at this point when we taste it we can do anything we want giving it a minute or so for the mint to dissolve and permeates the chocolate flavor. Which could happen in the first five minutes of freezing anyway. <laughs> A little more mint. Boy, that's chocolatey. Now this is very strong, right? Very strong. Yes, uh, I would try a capful. Yeah, about it, let's try a capful. What, that wasn't a capful? Uh, uh, sure. Huh? No. 
A little more or less. That was about four or five capsules. And everybody reminds me of my uh, mint chip Italian ice. <laughs> they said, you didn't need to use mouthwash for the next four months. Okay, let's see what we got. That's what we want. So there you go. What I would also add to this, if I had them, would be chocolate chips, the dark chocolate chips. I think that would be good in this, but we don't have any. The conditions we have to work under here, I want to call the union. There was a bag. There was a bag. That's like a song. There was a bag. But we don't have it anymore, right? Well, it, it kind of <laughs> got a slit into it. And then my wife accidentally kind of found it with the slit uh, into it. Ah, okay. And so now we do have Now, we do have the uh, turtles. It may be that the Thompsons made them disappear one chip at a time. I suspect so. I do, too. <laughs> You do have the turtles. We have the turtles that were left over, but they're not frozen, so it's hard to grind them up. Okay. Um, any questions? Could you sell this in a store? You know, a chocolate, dark chocolate with a hint of mint? Yeah, I think so. You could also throw, if, I, if we had maraschino cherries, I'd throw those in. Cherry mint chocolate, I mean, this is where your store is going to become, wow, they had cherry mint chocolate ice cream. I mean, it's three great flavors. Who's going to knock it? And nobody else has it. I've never seen it. I don't think I've ever seen chocolate mint ice cream. Right? Stay awake. So that's it. Any questions about this? It's simple to make. They're all simple to make. That's, that's what the whole class was, right? The whole day of making ice cream was to get to one end, and that end is, this is easy. And you can tell it's easy because after lunch, all the teams that I divide people up in to make ice cream, after lunch, when we go back to making ice cream, they're talking, they're on their phone, angry birds, you know, they're talking to their friends. So what is, because it's that easy. Especially if you have recipes for you, it's a no-brainer. But even if you're not creative, like the two of you here, you can just go ahead and make your own. Right? Can you think of a flavor that you've never seen before that would be killer? Chocolate mint, right? That would be pretty good. I have seen chocolate cherry, because we make chocolate cherry in the store. But I've never seen chocolate mint. You know, mint chocolate chip, it's, imagine if you could make chocolate mint chocolate chip. Whew. Hello, Briars, wanna buy something? What do you think? I think it's been done. You think what? I think it's been done. Never. You're talking about putting mint into chocolate chip ice cream. Chocolate no. Chocolate chocolate chip. Taking mint chocolate chip ice cream and making it chocolate ice cream. That's not been done. And that would be good. If we had chips, we'd have it. Mint chocolate chip ice cream with chocolate ice cream. Dark chocolate ice cream. If we only had the chips. You'll need a wider signboard. Chocolate chocolate chip mint. I, these are reputation makers, I believe that. When you come up with something, I mean, maybe you won't like it, but when you come up with something and it's killer, nobody else has it. It's going to be, uh, that's what you want. One or two of those. Like we have Frankenstein on the board, Bride of Frankenstein, Chocolate Velvet, Peanut Butter and Jelly. Nobody else has those ice creams. How many of you are planning an ice cream parlor? Raise your hand. Italian ices? Okay, good. Both? Say both. Well, I assume they're going to do both. Well, uh, 
I know, I know you don't. I like to start off with Italian ice because it's inexpensive and you can get into business. And then from there, with your knowledge of that, you can expand into the next one I would do is dairy free because the process is the same. Uh, and then if you want later on, you can graduate into ice cream. But uh, tremendous money in uh, selling sugar water. It's, it's, it's a great business. Anybody have any questions about uh, any of those products? How to do it or They're all questioned out. Yeah, they are. Yes. Uh, earlier you mentioned something about where the sun on the battery is not allowed in the air. What does that do to the air pockets? I'm sorry, say it again? Earlier there she was talking about where the sun out of the battery there, you don't want to have air pockets. What is that? Why are air pockets bad when you're pulling them? ice cream? I don't think I say anything about air pockets. <laughs> oh. Christy, do you remember saying something about air pockets in the machine? In the machine? Yeah. In the con in the container, but not the machine. So if you extract it very thick, you have a good chance of it'll fold. Like it'll just start folding like this into your container, and you might see an air pocket here or there. And you'll have to take a tub, do that a couple times to get it nice and level. If you pull it on the thinner side, it's gonna pretty much fill your container nice and even. So it's an advantage to filling it on the uh, thinner side. Uh, nothing except that it doesn't look good when people scoop into it and there's, there's a gap of air. I mean, uh, one of my favorite ice creams uh, is Bluebell. And oftentimes I'll dig into a Bluebell coffee and just below the surface because they have flipped the tub over like we discussed. But there'll still be an air pocket underneath uh, that you dip in and there's just a, a gap in it. Um, it might bother someone. I know that the, the, the container is filled by weight so that it, because it's wholesale and they have to pass uh, certain weight uh, requirements. So I know that the half gallon still weighs out in general uh, perfect. Uh, but that's, uh, I, I'd be more concerned about it in pints. That's why I turn them upside down so that the uh, ice cream falls down to fill the lid. Yes? Most popular Italian ice flavors are? Yeah, mango is number two, which surprises me. Uh, lemon is one. Um, and then from there you get into um, cherry how do you chocolate. Put the, how do you put this? Uh, Italian ice is very ethnic. Um, five people could come into my office and I have to guess their favorite flavor of ice cream. I can't do it. If I have to guess what your favorite flavor of ices are, I have a pretty good chance. And where I can use that to my advantage is, if I'm doing fairs and festivals, I know pretty well that if I'm doing the Feast of San Gennaro down in Little Italy in Manhattan, uh, bring any flavor you want as long as it's lemon ice. Uh, if you're doing the Puerto Thanks Rican Day this. Parade up Fifth Avenue, uh, you're going to bring um, more of the uh, Caribbean fruity uh, ices. Uh, if you're going to uh, open up a store in Riverdale, which is predominantly Jewish. Uh, uh, your number one flavor is going to be chocolate ice. And on and on. You can go down to, if, if you go over to Christie's house, uh, you're definitely going to find pickle, uh, pickle and bacon Italian ice. Hey, that was good stuff. <laughs> See what I mean? That's good stuff. So you can literally uh, look at your festival. Oh, and there's a festival coming up in March, not far from here, a suburb of Winter Park, a suburb of Orlando, where I went to school, Winter Park. Um, they have the Winter Park Art Festival every uh, mid-March, and it's very foo-foo, you know, very highbrow. You're not going to sell cherry ice uh, or grape ice. You're going to have uh, kiwi sorbet and uh, apricot sorbet. And it's still Italian ice, but we've changed the name and raised the price. So uh, you can go, you can go that route, and you know everybody's going to sit there in their clear plastic cup and and scoop it. Uh, it's all made by a friend of mine down in uh, South Miami. Uh, called, uh, his product is uh, Ricky Arepas. Uh, Ricky is my cousin in uh, in uh, Miami. As as uh, Jimmy Buffett says, everyone needs a cousin in Miami. That's your go-to person. Uh, so he comes up and does all these sor uh, festivals, but uh, he might change the name from Italian ice to fresh fruit sorbet because it's a different crowd. Uh, you're doing a wedding. Uh, you're not going to do uh, 
Italian ice at the wedding, you'll call it uh, fresh fruit sorbet. So it's, it's, it's what's in the name. Um, I'll show you the difference. This is fun to do. Let me know when you're getting ready. I don't want to impringe on your time, impinge on your time. That's a lemon ice, okay? Everybody agrees that's a lemon ice. That's a lemon sorbet. They're both seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And my secret ingredient, which I forgot to tell you, you take six California lemons, because the, the Florida ones aren't any good, and you just grate off the outside skin. I call it the specs, the chef calls it the zest. The zest gets thrown into the ice, it's a pure white ice with little specks of uh, lemon in it. It looks fabulous. And you'll have people tell you day, all day long how much aroma and taste this, the uh, zest adds to the product. <laughs> it's a lot of bull. It means I can raise the price up to this. Okay, here we go. All right. Whoops. You all have froze. Okay, there it is. Would be better with chocolate chips. Yeah. Would it go right there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you. And there you go. You done with these? Nine quarts. Okay. Because it's freezing up to the wall. I know. I know. Mmm. That's excellent. We could We're not going to give it out. I'm just going to tell you how it is. <laughs> it's terrific. Two, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. If you put too much in, it's just going to take too long to freeze. It goes exponentially up. So if you, uh, we, I get a lot of phone calls and people say, my machine's taking 35 minutes to freeze. Well, how much did you put in? Well, it's a 24 quart machine, so I put in 24 quarts. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> That's what comes out. Um, so we, we had to answer that one a, a lot of times. Um, you can put more product in, but it's just a law of diminishing returns. If you're going to make it in eight minutes by putting two and a half gallons in and getting five back, or 16 minutes because you put uh, seven gallons in, uh, it's just so much more to freeze it. It's, it's, not, it's not worth your time. So we rate all our machines by finished capacity, which brings up a good point. Um, later on, you can look at the freezing cylinder over there. <coughs> we rate our machines by how much ice cream comes out of the machine when it's ready. 24 quart machine can make 24 quarts of product. Other people rate their machines, I, I'm not gonna say dishonest, but I don't agree with it. They rate it by taking that cylinder and turning it up right vertically. And then they fill it with water. And it takes 19 quarts of water to fill it to the very top. And so they say it's a 19 quart batch freezer. It's not a 19-quart patch freezer. That would make this 24-quart machine about 32 quarts. Uh, by, by telling people that that's a 19-quart batch freezer when it's actually about a 12 or a 13-quart batch freezer. So <clears throat> you have to ask questions. You shouldn't have to, but you do. You have to say is that when you say it's a 19-quart machine, does 19 quarts come out or, or something less? And if they're honest, they'll tell you what the amount is. That's why we do it by finished capacity. Yes? I had wrote down that the 24 was actually 12 quarts, and then if you're um, doing <laughs> Italian ice, you go up to 14 quarts. Is that about right, or did I write that down? Italian right? ice has very little air in it. Um, we make, on all the machines, full batches using based on the bags. The okay. bags are two and a half gallons of mix. So with the air, that's five gallons of ice cream, 20 quarts. 
uh, the machine could make, can make, and will make for you 24 quarts of ice cream. But you would have to pour in a whole bag and now measure out two more quarts. And that's going to throw all your recipes off, and it's a pain in the neck. <clears throat> so in ice cream, I do 20 quarts finished capacity. In Italian ice, which takes twice as long, uh, 18 minutes uh, on the bigger machine, um, 18 minutes times an eight-hour day, if I can pick up four or five more batches by putting more in, that's worthwhile to me. So um, the only thing that's going in there in Italian ice is sugar and water. So I control the amount of sugar and the amount of water, so my recipe will reflect what it is I want to make, and I can take out the higher capacity. But when you're dealing with the bags of mix, it just doesn't pay to pour a whole bag in and then come over here and measure it again. And now I have to recalculate my, how much mint and how many chips and everything else like that. It just makes it simple. But the finished capacity the capability of the machine is 24 quarts. So my, my formula for the lemon ice, again, is 7 pounds of sugar and 14 quarts of water. That 7 pounds of sugar is taking up space. So that's bringing it up to about 16 or 17 quarts of liquid, plus another quart for the uh, lemon juice. So now I'm up really in about 18 uh, quarts of product in there, and I'm going to get 24 out. We ready for our next flavor? You have to... What was the judgment on this one? Oh. The judgment is I would sell this in a heartbeat with chocolate chips and a touch more mint. Okay. Yeah, the mint was lacking. You're right. Well, that's a nice genteel way to put it. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to be genteel. I'm trying to Should critique an ice cream. From the beginning, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you have to, the, your blueberry ice cream. Okay, here we go. Thank you. I was asked to make this, and Christy came up for the formula. There's a baby shower that uh, Paula is going to in a couple of weeks, and they said it's a boy, and could you please make a blue ice cream? So we're going to bring a blue ice cream. I said, what's, what's better blue than blueberry? Um, so we're going to use three and a half quarts of the blend, uh, which is right there, 36 ounces of blueberry jelly, jam, or preserves, whichever one you have. And that's going to be uh, the Smucker's uh, blueberry preserves. Um, and uh, three ounces of blueberry extract. Where did that go? Right there. You just, the two little I bottles. Just had it, yeah. Uh, this I got on Amazon. I like the looks of this one. It's blue, pure blueberry extract. Blueberries themselves are on the weak side, just like strawberries. So I want to bolster the flavor. So we're going to put uh, some extract in there, and we're guessing at what's going to be right. But you actually made this already. Yes. So we know what's going to go in there. So let me start pouring this in. We're going to three and a half quarts over here. Always check that the gate's closed, because the last thing we did was made, we made ice cream. And uh, we left the gate open when we finished. So it's going all over your feet, and you call me up, and you're cursing me out, saying we built a terrible machine. It's leaking all over my beautiful mahogany hardwood floors. They just went up in value. Um, and I said, did you close the gate? Oh, there's a gate? Uh, okay. I found that if you rest the bucket on this big, huge lid, it might still spill down the side. If you raise it up a little bit, you won't spill a drop. Now, I hope I make you feel bad because I want you to know that I'm blind in my right eye. So if a blind, partially blind guy can do this, you ought to be able to do it beautifully. Not a drop. Absolutely. Um, go ahead and put this in. You can, yeah, you can put it all in whatever okay, order you want. This is our blueberry extract. And how are we getting this in? You just... Is it going to come out? Yeah, with the spatula. Oh. Yeah. You got to, like... You got a smaller spatula? I don't think that one's going to fit. Perfecto. Thank you. So while he's doing that, he asked a question of, does the ripeness of the fruit change the flavor of the product? Yes, it does. Um, so that leads to another, fresh or frozen. I prefer frozen fruits. Reason why is because they're picked at their most perfect season, and they are frozen right away. When you let your frozen fruit thaw, 
it makes the most beautiful natural sweet juice in the bag itself so kind of like taking fresh fruit sprinkle sugar over it let it sit in the fridge overnight now it's made itself a nice simple syrup out of its own from the sugar and the strawberries or the sugar and the blueberries frozen fruits automatically do that when you let them thaw um, my kid will tell you you know <laughs> I talk about her a lot go ahead oh you needed two jars um, I just want to show you Jeff lets it mix nothing is happening for the first six minutes it's chilling down and then it hit a freezing point it's like boiling water water just sits there and then it hits the proper temperature and boom it's boiling nothing's going on here so why not turn on the refrigeration I'm all about speed I want to get this done so I can go sit in my bar barca lounger and you know watch Oprah so uh, I am moving as fast as I can so it's already freezing but it will mix just fine because nothing is turning into ice cream yet uh, my daughter will tell you she's a blueberry fanatic. She'll sit there and eat the entire pack of blueberries if you let her. Um, she'll tell you that she prefers fresh over frozen, but that's because she sits there and eats it like that. When it comes to working with ice cream or ices or cream ice or sorbets, I always like yeah, to do frozen and let it thaw. Unless, you know, you have like a peach festival or a strawberry festival going on, you know, you can buy those peaches. Uh, you can freeze them yourself. Uh, sprinkle some sugar, put them in the freezer on your own, and then pull them out and then let them thaw. And then you can say made with, you know, your local orchard um, peaches. Now what I just did, you cannot do with any other batch freezer on the market. They all come down to about a little quarter, half inch opening. I just took a whole bag of blueberries and threw it in there. Now, uh, Jeff and I agree, buy name brands uh, where you need it. Uh, I do buy, instead of buying uh, the name brand um, of uh, the blueberries, uh, like Driscoll, uh, I'm using blueberries from the local supermarket that's a uh, Publix. They were picked at the height of freshness. They don't add any other sugar or syrups or anything. It's just blueberries. I do uh, thaw them overnight in the fridge because if I take them here and only partially thaw them, they'll still have some ice to them and that ice will transport right into the ice cream and you'll you'll taste it as icy particles so when you're using fresh fruit like this fresh frozen fruit make sure you get it fully thawed now everything's in there I've been freezing now for two minutes and instead of waiting uh, for t two minutes and then turning it on I'm already two minutes into my process I only have probably about seven or eight minutes left before I can pull it out and go sit down. So that's that. It's all about speed. You're going to be doing this for eight hours. There's no sense falling in love with the product, watching this and going, oh, look at my blueberries. Uh, just get the job done and go on to the next flavor. Right, Jeff? <laughs> Any questions? Yes. I'll tell you what you Absolutely. Um, I have just discovered those uh, 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 packets of electrolytes. Went through one of those wonderful illnesses where you just completely are lost of all your electrolytes for about 24 hours. And so I've been drinking for the past week electrolytes and I put it into water and you don't, you know, you can taste it, it's there, but it doesn't change the texture of anything. So I think it's a great idea. Wow. Maybe I'll you're onto something. The first I'll tell ice you cream. What the next great idea is, and someone's going to make a lot of money on it, energy Italian ices. I think he just did. Yes. That's what he just did. Electrolytes. You know, what do you need me for? <laughs> <laughs> so like a Gatorade Italian ice? Well, no, like the no. Energy. I'll show them to you. It's um, a Red Bull Italian? I could definitely go for that. Take over one second. I want to go get one. I'll be okay. right back. <laughs> oh, take over. Uh, talk. <laughs> Okay. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll pass this around so that you can see it. 
I'll pass this around so you can see it. It's called Liquid IV. And, and they're fantastic. They come in different flavors. You can get a neutral one. But just so you can see it, you can buy it on Amazon. My son told me about this because he's in a lot into sports. And it's, a, it's like, I think they advertise it. It's like even little five or six times the amount of water you would normally take in because you're rehydrating so quickly. And, and it's just great. Yeah, there you go. So definitely worth, uh, uh, that's a great idea. I, I like it a lot. I, well, it's his idea now. <laughs> well, we'll think about it. Might, maybe we will. But it would be, um, a, a, a sorbet would be great with electrolytes because you're getting... Yeah, yeah, this one I'm passing around is great. And, and, and the tangerine's good, they're, they're terrific. You mean I'm gonna make it? Yes, no, You I'm mean gonna, I, I no. have to make the formula, right? I'm, I'm gonna make it. Okay. All we're gonna do is just take a standard Italian ice and pour in the uh, electrolytes, yes. Well, Dissolving the sugar to get more mileage out of the blades. How often do you have to change the blades and the machine? The blades in our machines uh, go approximately five years. Of course, it'll depend on how you're running the machine. Uh, if you're running it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, maybe you'll only get three years. Uh, there are also the blades. Let me grab a dasher and just show you real quick. We have them held together right now by springs so that the springs don't go flying, if that makes sense. That's a 24-quart dasher. That's very heavy. I've been lifting my weight, so it's, it's, I make it look simple. It's killing me. Um, so that's all stainless steel manufactured across the street at our other factory. These blades are Delrin, which is uh, one of the few FDA-approved uh, uh, plastic resins that you can use in a machine and the springs are what push it out. Uh, the old blades we used were thrown out by centrifugal force, but when I started slowing down the machine with the infinite overrun control, now they're not scraping the walls because they're falling away because of the low speed. With these springs, it doesn't matter if the blade is one day old or three years old, it's still gonna push the white Delrin blades against the walls with the same amount of force. Our old blades had to be sharp. Everybody else's blades, they're also Delrin. They have to re be replaced every six months. Six months. And they cost as much as ours that go five years. Uh, so we get a lot of mileage. There's no maintenance on them, no sharpening, no nothing. Uh, just run them and change the springs maybe once a year. That's very inexpensive. You know, kind of like tuning up your car. Every once in a while you gotta change the oil, I hope. So that's, that's what that system does, and then that's in all the machines in, in different sizes. So no, no worries there. There was another question? No? Okay. Yes? Do you sell a tune-up kit? No, we don't. Uh, do we sell a tune-up kit? No, because tune-up kits are not necessary. Uh, it depends on what you're, uh, how often you're running it. There's no sense selling you uh, springs if you're making uh, ice cream or ices twice a week. I mean, they're going to go for a long time. Uh, we sell individual parts. We know what you need. So when you call up, rather than charge you $400 for a quote-unquote tune-up kit, we're going to sell you, you know, $14 O-rings because that's all you need. We'll sell you what you need. Uh, and also, we do everything different. We do it the old-fashioned way with customer service. Uh, we don't go through dealers because, quite frankly, they don't, got, they don't have nearly the knowledge base that everybody in this building does. So we sell you direct. Some person who's selling ovens and, and deep fat fryers is a very nice person, but what do they know about batch freezers? We know batch freezers. Embry Thompson, my grandfather, invented it. So we're your best source of information. I tell people if you own a another person's machine, a tailor, a Capuchani, an Electrofreeze, a Bravo, and you have a problem, call us. We can probably help you with it. We don't sell their parts, but uh, we've heard everything. We know when you've left the sugar out that uh, you were making a cherry ice and you have water and cherry juice and you forgot the sugar. 
because it's banging and clanking. We'll say, oh, there's nothing wrong with your cappuccini. You just need to put the f seven pounds of sugar in that you forgot. <laughs> and I say, call me back and let me know how it works. They never call back. A little while. Okay. It's only at nine minutes. Okay. What's in there? Me pulling some out. Oh. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. I'll be right there. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The difference between Italian ice and sorbet. The difference between Italian ice and sorbet is that champagne glass and the squeeze cup. It's the same product. Lemon sorbet, seven pounds of sugar. Use this formula. This is the best ice that anybody has ever made. I sold this formula to Universal Studios in 1992. That's how good it is. Seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice. You gotta squeeze lemons. And six California lemons and a cheese grater. Watch out for your knuckles, that really hurts as you grate off the outside zest. And that's the best lemon ice you'll ever have. Sorbet, same formula, just change the name and triple the price. It's, it's the same thing. Anybody tells you different has never made ices and sorbet in their life, they're just selling a machine. I'm sorry, what? Again, the uh, more sugar, the smoother the product. So I can vary it, uh, the smoothness, by adding more sugar. Uh, yes? Uh, just for the, the maintenance, when you are changing the blades, uh, is there somebody that you need to go through for that? To change the blades? Yeah. Where's my dasher? I put your dasher back. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, we have a spring on here just so it doesn't go flying apart. But I'm going to take this apart right down to nothing and then put it back together for you. And it's not because I'm some genius, because I'm not. Okay, there's the dasher. It's got four springs. We're gonna put one on here, one on here, and then we're gonna put this blade on. Whoops. We're almost halfway finished. Okay, that's half of the blade changed. The other one, I'm going to put the spring on there. The springs can go either way, doesn't matter. The blades have to go a certain way, but you knew, we knew you were going to mess it up, so we drilled a little hole in it. The little hole tells you that it's facing forward. And let's see, that's the back, so this must be forward. I'm going to put uh, that drill hole forward. There's your maintenance. Right there, that's all it was too. You don't have to hire for someone for $90 to do it. If you want to pay me $90 and I'm not busy, that's a pretty good deal. I'll come down. But that's, that's it. So there's your maintenance. And the once a year maintenance, can you see those two black rings on there? Those are rubber gaskets. You take a butter knife and you roll it off and throw it away. And then you roll on a new one. And that's once a year. You've just performed the entire maintenance on the whole machine. So that's pretty easy. This, no, this is a CB, CB350. You want to see something big. Now you're really taxing my muscles. I used to be a 98 pound weakling until I started taking electrolytes. <laughs> that's the 44 quart. And, and you can do this all day long. It's just great for you, I'm telling you. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, I was, before I met my wonderful wife, Paula, I was married before, and um, uh, my previous wife came to a trade show, and a man comes in, and he says, oh, my people could never lift that thing. My employees could never lift that thing. And she was about 5'11". She goes over and grabs it and says, get stronger employees. The guy is amazed. He walks away. And that's when I knew the beginning of the end. She goes, you owe me. <laughs> because that thing's heavy. So 
lifting that up is not that easy, but that's the biggest production machine in the world. Right there. Same design as all the others. What do you think? I think it could go another minute. Okay. It was a lot of sugar. Blueberries have sugar. Jam has sugar. Extract with alcohol. <laughs> okay. Yes. So with all these different names for Italian ice or sorbet, we're actually going to open up in a market that almost has no exposure to this product at all. Yeah. Indianapolis. Rita has put in two stores within the last year on the north side of Indianapolis, a good 20, 25 miles from where we'll be. And there's no one else in our area that has anything like the Italian ice. So do you have a suggestion as like, do we go with Italian ice is what we're calling it? Is it better to call it sorbet? Is there a way to market it to kind of make sure we can distinguish it from snow cones, ices, the stuff they're used to? Because that's all that they know. You know? Uh, Rita's calls it water ice okay. uh, because they're Philadelphia. Uh, they used our machines for millennials. Uh, millennial, I mean, uh, years and years. Um, because we used to build for a company called Electrofreeze. We would build all their batch freezer. Now Electrofreeze is owned by another Italian company, and so they had to stop buying our machines because they were importing everything. Uh, but that's water ice, which I think is a terrible name. Uh, it just doesn't sound right compared to Italian ice. Um, I, I would go with Italian ice, or if it's an upscale neighborhood, uh, I would go with fresh fruit sorbets. Either way, you're going to have to uh, um, explain to people, you know, what, what the product is at first. But once they try it, I mean, typically, if a place is selling snow cones and they put in an Emory Thompson to make Italian ice, uh, in 2023, when they're making snow cones, it's 100% snow cones. And uh, by the end of the summer, it'll be 90% and 10% Italian ice. By this time next year, it'll be 100% Italian ice. It blows away snow cones because a snow cone is nothing more than shaved ice with some artificial flavor and color poured over it. You know, if, you're, if, if parents ever thought about the, what they were giving their kids, they would never give them that. It's no better than a 7-Eleven Slurpee. I think you can pull it now. Okay. So I'm going to turn off the refrigeration, open the gate, and here we go. See how fast that comes out? We want production. That's six quarts right there. I got it. You can get the rest. And we advertise it as a six quart machine, though we know there's this much left in there still. But better to undervalue the underrate the machine than to overrate. So now we're pulling out about seven and a half quarts. Out this, of this is a machine. pretty color. It's very pretty. It is pretty. It'll be great at the baby shower. Yeah. If I want to get more blue instead of purple, could I just put a coloring in it? Yeah, you can put a, a food coloring in it. Sure. I would uh, reach out to Green Mountain Flavors. Uh, that's that green folder that you guys have. So the thing about Stan at Green Mountain Flavors is they don't use artificial colors like Red Dye 40. They extract their colors from like beets. It doesn't taste like beets, but they are using the color from the beets to make it red. Uh, same things for all of pretty much everything else that they have. Stan is a chemist and he's a genius. And uh, he saw a market for all natural uh, colors and extracts and went after it and he's done a fantastic job. He does. Um, you know, and exactly as Steve said, he's, he's a scientist. Mm. There have been times where I've I wanted perfect. to hit my head on the table because <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, just how much of this do I put in there? Um, but, you know, you got to go by weight or by volume. Um, and sometimes I, I felt like I needed a pair of goggles and a beaker. I, I try to explain to uh, Stan, Stan Sitton is the name, he's the president <laughs> of the company, that uh, I grew up on uh, inches and, and quarts. And he's in, you know, milliliters and kilometers. And I said, yeah, Stan, I tried that one. I told the cop that... Uh, uh, I, I wasn't breaking the speed limit because I was going in kilometers, and they still, it still ended up in cuffs. <laughs> you know, everything I do ends up in cuffs. Um, so you're going to like this. And this is our last flavor, so this is your golden opportunity to ask questions. 
We'll give you a tour of the factory. And